Yeah. It's all that carbonated water. Mm, delicious carbonated water. Carbonated my water, my okay. beloved. Carbonated water, uh, much like uh, Nuka Cola that they enjoy in the Fallout <laughs> series. Oh, shit, yeah, alive. <laughs> but yeah, but like, you know, carbonated water doesn't make your pee glow like Nuka Cola does. Yet. I like that is I true. Like the glowy tingles. You know, that is true. That is true. It makes it very apparent when you pee yourself. Out of curious, any of you here actually looking forward to the Fallout show that's supposed to be dropping like next month? We are the Fallout show. I have no need for another. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, it looks I mean, fun. Is, God it does, does look have fun. A sale going on right now for uh, the the game of the year edition for Fallout Four for ten dollars. I might grab it. It keeps it, it keeps up uh, pretty well with the base material from what I saw. The person I didn't think to get who would go like absolutely nuts over it is my dad. My dad was like, "Did you see the zombie in the cowboy hat?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a oh, slur. Like tweet, Connor? We do, yes. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode of Gateway. Gateway. Woo! Yippee! We're back. And then we're immediately. <laughs> and then we're immediately going on hiatus again <laughs> due to a couple of scheduling <laughs> conflicts. Month. For a month. <laughs> Ain't that just the tabletop way? That That's tabletop RPGs for you. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Schrodinger's Gateway. Episode 70? I thought it was 71. Hmm. No, it might I'm, pre I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this is episode... Oh, it is in fact episode 70. One second. All right. 70 uh -huh. whole episodes of Gateway out of 1 million years. <laughs> I'll, I'll get out the spelling error taser. Give me your arm, Connor. I can't. I'm typing up the new episode. <laughs> uh. There it is. Chad, I tased him. There he lies. <laughs> oh, no. My baby. <laughs> there there he lies. In my notes, it's listed as episode 71. So I, I get why we're not doing it on the 13th, but what's going on on the 27th? We can't do it. Uh, Me and Ed are going to be at Anime St. Louis. Oh, that's where I met you. That's that is true. I mean, we a, met I in like 2012, out, I think. I mm -hmm. point out, though, I'm at a convention and I'm doing Gateway. Well... It's hard I'm, to I'm DM from the road. <laughs> I'm happy that you've got uh, that you're fortunate enough to Good have money for, for a laptop. You. Yeah, I'd get on my level. <laughs> oh my god, I, I, Sarah. I wish I please. could. Get, get on my level of financial responsibility, noob. You're gonna uh, get, you're, on, you're, get on you know get what? on your you get on your bracket, you mean? Get on your tax bracket? Oh my god, could you Jesus. imagine being on a tax what bracket? Well, Sarah, I don't even know if I'm paying taxes this year. I know oh I'm not. God. I did my taxes, because, and Uncle Sam went, "Bitch, you okay?" Because I don't know if I made enough money. <laughs> I'm, I dude. I can't even be on a tax bracket. You know, you, you know what, Connor? I have half a mind to just drive over and hand you my laptop and go show that bitch up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I will get on your level when the establishment collapses. Yeah. Anyway, in the interim, welcome to Gateway, like everybody. Fallout. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Walk Welcome away. to Caitlin, everyone. Let's go around the horn and introduce ourselves, starting with Caitlin. Where can they find you, and what are you up to? Well, hi, hey, hello there. My name is Caitlin Elizabeth. You can find me all over the internet at Boobs McBalrog. Um, uh, let's see, shilling-wise, what do I got? Uh, oh yeah, if, if you play Honkai Star Rail, and you just got through 2.1, you probably came across me uh, voicing Kakavasha. Kakavasha. I always said the name wrong. Kakavasha. Um, even in session, I said it wrong. Um, and like then a also. Name. To be fair, that is, uh, that is a complicated a sweet, sounding name. He's a sweet little boy. He's had a really hard time. Um, Kakavasha. 
Yeah, sorry. I had to... <laughs> I literally went over it in my head before <laughs> saying it out loud, too. I was like, Kakasha. And I had said it wrong anyway. Um, Kakashi also, of the Hidden Leaves. Yeah, it feels that way. Um, also, what was the other one? Uh, Mars Express. Um, there's a French film that's going to be in theaters in mm. uh, early May, and I voice some robots in that. I believe nice. uh, my robot lady is the gold horned one on the front of the, the cover. Um, uh, and then there are many more secrets, but those are the ones I can divulge. That's yeah. it for me. Excellent. Up next, we've got Lanny Pator. Where can they find you? What are you what? up to? Well, that's me. You can find me trying to raise my tax bracket all over the internet at Lanny Pator. Feel free to follow me and support <laughs> me on stuff. I don't know. Uh, just finished up my Yu Yu Hakusho abridged creator commentary thingy. You check that out on my main channel. Been playing through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth when I actually have time to stream, which is less time than I'd like, but you know what? Life's exciting right now, so you make do with it. Um, beyond that, if you're not all role-played out here, tomorrow, 1 o'clock Central Time, twitch.tv slash Lanny Pator, we got a little <laughs> campaign called The Ties That Bind. Uh, the team just fought a dragon. Come see the fallout of what uh, what comes of their the successful venture. Gateway? Yeah, yeah, see, look, I'm, 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 playing, I'm playing this out here. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Hoi, 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 indeed. Um, beyond that, check out the Dragon Ball GT discussions that Kaiser and I have been having on Bento. They've been a lot of fun. I really like how they're put together. Let me know what you think in the comments below that video. That's me. Excellent. Up next, we've got Hey, Mr. Rabbit. Where can they find you? What are you up to? Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's Hi. going on? My name's Rabbit. How are you doing? I'm a writer. I'm a writer. That's that's what I do. Uh, I'm a writer who writes. And also, uh, you can see me do my best impression of uh, Luffy climbing up Drum uh, Drum Mountain when I try to raise money on Twitch.tv slash Hey, Mr. Rabbit. The top of the plateau is a single tax bracket. You can see me play all kinds of fun games. You can see me play horror games on Thursday of Sarah, RPGs on Friday with my bud at midnight. You can see me play uh, retro RPGs and whatnot on uh, on Tuesdays, visual novels and the like with uh, Spaz. And on Monday, I play action RPGs with all kinds of different people. The new season of Path of Exile came out. It's called Necropolis. You get ghosts. It's amazing. I made a necromancer in celebration of it. Um, you know, necropolis, necromancer. That makes sense, right? That makes, mm. that makes sense. Uh, and so, if you want to see me voicing myself, Ooh. you can go ahead and see me at twitch.tv slash heymrrabbit. Nice. You can see me at good all fake, good fake out. Day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love comedy. <laughs> That's me. Excellent. And next, we've got Sarah. Where can they find you? What are you up to? Hi, I'm Sarah Williams, local pariah. Huh? I can be fit. Oh. Local oh, pariah? Oh, if my DM is going to kill me now. <laughs> I don't understand. I love oh, pariah. Forgot. That's Sweet, a, never mind then. Game. That's a good horror <laughs> game. And everyone forgot. Yay. <laughs> I do not hold grudges. Um, huh. I just like playing Gateway, Connor. That's why. Mm, mm. Yay. I'm on Twitch and Twitter. I'm, I'm on, uh, not Twitch. I'm on Twitter and YouTube. It's here with an ATM with a new Willia. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. Ha ha ha! Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Excellent. Uh, I suppose that leaves me. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Tumblr, and Blue Sky at Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, uh, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, yes. 
lot of stuff. Uh, currently working my way through God of War 2018, getting ready to wrap that up. <coughs> Doonish Ooh. here. How you digging it? It's very fun, very cool. Can't wait for Ragnarok to come out on PC. So I can play do that you one know too. that's my first God of War game I ever played? Uh, I, I do not know that. It it was it was so wild. So when like he picked up the uh, we picked up the things I, like you know the things, uh, everybody was chimping out in my chat, and I was like, what what? He just grabbed funny chains. What what what's that? Oh, that's what those do. <laughs> ah yes. Um, after I'm finished with God of War, I'm going to be playing Dragon's Dogma, working my way up to the second one. Uh, and yes. Uh, also working on my own D and D homebrew stuff on the DMs Guild. You can go look that up. Um, also, uh, in, in, in case you are not in the know, you can hear me as Sheriff Harden in the uh, newest update for Hunt Showdown, Desolation's Wake. Nice. You can hear a couple of my uh, little voice lines in there uh, as some yeah. journal entries. I never heard you so happy. You like I saw that clip of you re like listening to your own voice line and you sounded like a kid on Christmas. That was so cool. It was yeah. very fun being able to hear my own voice in a game that I've played for years. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> well, hell yeah, brother. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Uh, Gotta yes. Uh, other than that, this episode was brought to you in part by I Heard Ice. Okay, hold on. Let me go ahead and uh, limber. <sighs> Die hard, guys! That's right. I got my headphones off just in time. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Die Hard Dice is your one stop on? shop. I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Die Hard Dice is your one stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLES to save 10% on your order. Uh. Do also, not the, the merchandise, the lives aspect dice are being restocked. I'm not sure if they are by this point, but we're trying. Um, also, be sure to uh, check out our spring store. We got all sorts of designs on there that are uh, available as pretty much anything you could think of in terms of merch. You got stickers, apparel, uh, mugs, water bottles, etc., etc. We also couldn't do this week in, week out without bits and subs from viewers like you. Viewers such as IDC Witch, thank you for the 13 months. Kilroy Von Lockwick, thank you for the three months. Love Gateway, love you. IDC Witch, thank you for the bit episode 70. Yes, I made a mistake. It is in fact episode 70. Uh, Kuro Okami, thank you for the 42 months. This is our once a month day. I felt the morning sun and I knew this was our once in a month day. <laughs> Oregon native, thank you for the 100 bits. Ketchel and the VOD got family day today. Well, have a happy family day. Rains well, thank you for the 28 months. Woohoo, gateway, 1,000 years gateway. Uh, Here's gateway. IDC Witch, thank you for the 100 bits. Keep, uh, keep up the great work, Runaways. Xenomorph King, thank you for the six months of subbing. Mad Hatter Friend, thank you for the 100 bits. Roll well, y'all. Had a great time meeting you, Sarah. Oh, hi. Thank you for coming by. And yeah. Cafe Orc Boss, thank you for the 95 bits. Ooh, ooh, I love you all. I heard we love you a too. Cynthia Cosplayer. That is what yeah. I heard. I will try to find, it, find her and, and do a picture. Yeah, Sarah's a true professional. She's at a con, she's at a con right now, so. <laughs> it's true. She's <laughs> pulling that triple Sorry. duty. <laughs> I was only half no, serious. I only Anybody in the Minnesota play. area, stop by Anime Detour. Go say hi. Minnesota. Because I want to play so much. Because I love Gateway. Yeah. Well, we're about ready to do just that. If and you guys are prepared. Yeah, I am yeah, yeah, prepared. Yeah. I've taken I've taken off my I've taken off my heavy hoodie and I slapped it down on the ground like Piccolo. Alright. 
by chat. Ooh. Then let us commence. Apex. Bye bye. Bye. Oh well, that's fantastic. Good, <laughs> Good time. Thank you, Pupper. We agree. Hey. Hi. Hello, dog. I love he's got that barf, 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 bark. <laughs> it is just like stock dog dot wave. Hey. Hey. Boop. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the dog's answering questions. <laughs> He's just excited we're starting. Yeah, dog's just excited for Gateway. Can't blame him. Yeah, can't blame him. Can't blame him. Who among us could blame him? They Not they knocked us. over our uh, Amazon spy device. Oh. You have some boofy dogs. We do. We do. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get the buck into it. <laughs> yeah! Let's do it, gamer. Yeah. Last we left the runaways, Apex the Wild Man, Cynthia the Nurse, Louise the Scavenger, and Alvin the Mechanic. They fought their way through the dangers of the wasteland on their way to the St. Louis Science Center. The gang discussed leaving Bruce Dredd and his brother outside once they finally arrived, but what to their tentative joy, Dr. Owl seemed excited to learn that the sons of his friends were at his doorstep. Being led through the planetarium, Bruce and Baskin had a heartwarming family reunion with their parents, while the others discussed what needed to happen next. During the conversation, however, the super mutant behemoth was brought up, and was, and this captured Dr. Powell's attention, muttering, Oh, huh. What does this mean? What now, on tonight's episode of Gateway... I believe uh, Louise said, uttered before I was cut off last week, um, something akin to Nani de fuck? You <laughs> know him. Uh, the singular glowing eye of Dr. Howell sort of flickers in recognition of what you've just said. It's slow turning of the head towards you, Apex, as the solitary skeletal face begins to speak. Wait a second. No, him. I Yes, I do know him. What is he? Yeah, what? Yeah, what's he like? Dr. Howell sort of stares down at the floor, then up to the ceiling. his vision seemingly caught in the projected starscape of, of the device in this planetarium. Johan is many things. I suppose you say that you met him, saw him, what was he like, 
He was confused, sad, alone. Wandering. He longed for a home. I sensed almost a bit of kinship with him. And I know what it's like to be alone in those wastes, not knowing who you can trust. Uh, you but you then, mention you mentioned that doc that you felt a kinship with Johan and in that moment Dr. Howell sort of turns his head towards you and you hear a little interesting he was I know nice. that he was I know that he was experimented on somewhere in the arena I pull out the FEV, like, the pieces of the, like, the weird Faraday cage thing and some of the, like, used syringes with, like, trace chemicals in it. But his ability to get into my brain. How do you stop that? I have something I can add to, add to the cage set I gave you. Uh, I'll add uh, the coffin notes that I took down, just the coffin notes that I took around the facility, and the uh, schemata for the uh, cage that I drew up before uh, I disassembled the cage. Uh, and I'll place it on a table next to Dr. Hal. If you can make Doc sense of any of this. Dr. Hal looks over at the, the cage and does a brief glance at it. This is remarkably intact. <clears throat> uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much for saying so. I've never disassembled anything like it before. You show remarkable ingenuity and technological know-how if you've never seen something like this and yet disassembled it with its quality. Well, that's Hall very kind of you to blush. say, Dr. Howe. Uh, I'm not sure what it's all for. I it's guess meant the to coffee was what it is. psychic bits. Oh. Is this Daddy. something... Is this something that we would have to put on him? Yes. Luckily, we know one person who isn't affected by him. And I turn to Cynthia. That'd be me. Yeah, but we still got the problem that he's as, he's as big as a frickin' three-story building now. Three it's a little more complicated. Yeah, he grew in size. He wears a piece of construction equipment like it was a, like it was a chest plate. So he's that big now. Is he going to get bigger? He, he grew when we were at the magic house. Dr. Howell looks at the floor when you ask him that. Oh, hell. What was your relationship to him? Dr. Howell actually walk over to one of the seats and, and sit down in an odd gesture for someone who cannot feel fatigue and yet you see it quite plainly in his posture. Oh boy. <clears throat> I'll take a seat next to him. I suppose I might as well start from the beginning. How did you know him? How did he end up at the arena? How can he do what he does? Hmm. 
when I was still a man, still an institute scientist, I studied the applications hello? of... Hello? Hmm? Hello? I, I hear you both. <clears throat> I do too. Yeah, I hear you. Lonnie? Did we lose Nick? Lanny, oh. you there? Oh. Yes. Uh -oh. I see him flashing, uh -oh. I don't hear him. I think his audio cut out. Headphones might have gotten pulled out. Ruh -ruh. Oh. oh, yeah, he's having some a little bit of sound issue. Oh no. Oh he dear. Still, he still appears to be oh, on. Oh, you can hear me? Oh, there yeah, you are. Yeah, there you are. Weird. Furious typing. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, no? apo apologies, folks. Technical difficulties. Mm hmm. How was your day? <laughs> My day was all right. I finished the rest of the pizza and did some sweeping. I'm getting ready to go to. Uh, I'm getting ready to go to Michigan on Monday. Ooh. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a musical artist I love. Uh, his name is uh, Nellward. Uh, he's doing a concert up there in Michigan, and I'm gonna go up with uh, my buddy Groove. And we're gonna go ahead and ro jam out to the rock music. Oh, that'll be fun. Will be quite fun. And I spent today trying to find uh, Cadbury cream eggs for my sister. No Aww. avail. I went to six places, but I bought the next best thing: Cadbury candy bars. That if you combine them, will form an egg. <laughs> you will roll them up very gently. That's cute. She uh, let me borrow her thermos, so I'm bringing it back to her on Easter, and I'm turning it into a little Easter basket. Uh, other than that, um, did some writing for, uh, uh, did some writing for my friend Bev, uh, putting the pop finishing touches on that, and then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Played some Bellatro. <laughs> ah, yes, Bellatro. I'm probably gonna buy that tonight I was, to play it, because... I was playing it before... Really play it. I was playing it before we came in here tonight. Oh, oh, Lanny's back, I think. Hello. There hey, we go. Up, sorry, so, sorry about that. I was having trouble reconnecting to Discord for some reason. Uh, Weird. Might be some like agreed. local interference or something. Anyway, tell me where the man is. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, uh, what was he like? Yes, that was it. Where is he? Yeah. Tell yeah, me about who, who the was, man. Like, yeah. What What was he like? Why can he do what he did? Why can he do what he does? And how did he get to the arena? Uh, it, Dr. Hal sort of looks down at his hands and then looks up at, at all of you. I suppose I may as well start from the beginning. When I was a man, still an institute scientist, I studied the applications of gene therapy, how it could be used to help humanity tackle the nuclear age we found ourselves in. I would use the forced evolutionary virus in my experiments to see if some of the benefits of supermutation could be applied to regular humans without suffering from its many, many drawbacks. My work continued for decades until... Eventually, my research team was disbanded and my experiment shut down. The Institute wanted to pursue their organic synth project using my notes on FEV. I left then, before I could see their latest pursuit to come to fruition. I came to St. Louis of a group called the Railroad. And I continued my experiments. I would even perform them on myself. So driven was I to see my next step for humanity come to being. 
Unfortunately, my wife, who escaped with me, couldn't see how important my research was. Looking back, I regret not doing more to help her with the babies. I regret not spending more time with her. You, uh, had children? Yes. Oh. Two boys. I most deeply regret the accident that exposed them to FEV. Louise kind of bites her lip and sort of like goes silent, just like, oof, okay. Apex crosses his arms and just kind of like looks down as like, He's starting to put something together in his head, but he's trying not to jump to conclusions. Susanna didn't survive her transformation into a super mutant. Say, Johan. Apex then closes. Apex then closes his eyes, realizing he was on the right path. Something. Louise's eyes go wide. Something. Incredible happens to him. To this day, I'm not sure if my experimentations on my own body somehow affected his biology as well, or if it was some sort of genetic fluke. Johan became something the world hadn't seen in over 100 years. A leader. Perfect super mutant. His young mind was unable to handle the transformation, however. And we both experienced something not even my research could have prepared me for. When he set fire to my mind, he nearly destroyed me before my other son could interfere and render Johan unconscious. The damage was done. However, my faculties and motor skills were impaired by the psychic blast. And so I had no choice but to become the being you see today. I tried my hardest to contain Johan. His abilities, his mutation, his psychic fits. I didn't have the manpower or the proper facilities to do either of those things. But the family did. I made a deal with Don Slick to use his arena to hold Johan until we could figure out a way for him to live normally without the rest of humanity suffering for it. Now, the world's first super mutant dominator is loose in the world. What came of your other son? He he looks up and he uh stares out one of the windows of this facility. Some years after Johan was taken from my custody, he decided to strike out on his own. I believe he now works among his people to try and bring about a new age in his own way. I wonder if you may have met him, my boss. 
<laughs> Louise's mouth drops. The fuck? <sighs> Holy, <sighs> Holy hell. Yeah, we've met Bach before. He's out at the airport. Shit. Yeah, Lambert, not too far from Riverside. I see. He was somehow able to overcome Johan's psychic abilities. I believe that is because he may have some of his own. Though the extent of it, I've not been able to study. We've seen him be barrels. able to. Yes, we've seen him be able to control feral ghouls simply by willing them to. Yes, that makes sense. Hmm. Box body is. somewhat of an insulator for radiation. I believe he can release this radiation at will and it somehow affects the ghouls. Um, above game, but he wasn't the only one, right? Wasn't that the other? Didn't, I, was Bach able to pass that to other people? It, it seems as though there were some people among the Harbingers who had uh some form of abilities like Bach. Was that because of Bach? Did we figure, or because it's been a long time since? Uh, th the answer is unclear, I believe, as far as you know. Okay, well, um, it, with that amount of information, then Louise frowns and she says, But I don't think Bach was the only one who could control ferals, though, right? Didn't that one lady we saved from the the family able to do that too? Maybe that's not a part of it then. No. Either way, if he has... Even if he does have the ability, it wouldn't help me. It's not something I can learn. <coughs> What sort of a device would we need to block him from being able to do it? And how would we have to apply it? Johan? I nod. That's right. I believe you already hold some of the pieces, the most important ones anyway. I designed that cage to dampen and focus his abilities family used family used his abilities for their own purposes that was part of the deal but I believe you can use the pieces of that cage craft some form of headpiece for him That would probably dampen his psychic abilities. If I could line it in a big enough helmet or something. It would need to be something that we'd be able to clasp onto him as well. Not something he should be able to remove easily. Wait, did I fade out with that last question? I didn't, Which, uh, didn't, didn't hear a question from you. Um, Louise says, wait, what were the family using him for exactly? I believe his ambient psychic pressure contributed to making the slaves in the arena more docile over time.
Holy shit. Apex thinks back to Rick and how he was so unwilling to try to leave at every given opportunity. Mm -hmm. I like the fact you might have... I like the idea you did that in character. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, Apex. You were too harsh on him. <laughs> <laughs> Like, remember Go apologize to Rick, Apex. <laughs> Regardless, we know he's out east now. Head linking up with a... Linking up with a perceivable army of super mutants out there. He wants his family. And he's gonna he get it any world. way he wants. He wants his world. I look back to my parents. <clears throat> They and have a, a, a bit of a, a sullen expression on their faces as they are recounted this tale. And that's why... That's why I'm still out here. I can't leave that unfinished. It's my fault that he got out in the first place. Your your mother sort of looks at you, her eyes welling with tears. I'll put a hand on Apex's shoulders. You ain't alone in trying to fix it up, you know. I mean, hell, I've done some really bad things, too. But we can make it right, just like I told you. I we have the pieces, and we have the key. So all we gotta do is figure out how to put it into the lock, right? Otherwise... Yeah, that's what we have to do. <laughs> hey, there's the apex, I uh, know. It'll give you a light punch on your shoulder. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're thinking helmet. Considering this thing, the way it's designed does remind me of those old machines that scan brainwaves. So it has to be over his head to function? It needs to be hard to take off, too. Maybe. It might be cruel, but the most efficient way would be a series of hooks. Looks to um, Cynthia with a bit of a wince. How do you feel about scaling a behemoth to put that thing on, Cynthia? Not too great, if I'm honest. <sighs> I look to Howl. Is there anything that you came up with that would potentially protect others from his ability? I suppose if your idea is to fashion it into a helmet, I could make it so that one of you, while wearing it, would be essentially immune. Well, How long Cynthia. would that take? And if y'all need materials, Louise is great at finding them. The, the, materi them. the materials you brought me are intact. So, probably a great deal shorter than if I would have to go and scavenge for supplies myself. That works out that, great. Cynthia's already good. immune. So one more of us immune would be a nice boost. Hmm. Certainly help things along. 
Either way you choose, the device will probably take me a few days. That's okay with me. Um, looks to Alvin. I think we got a little errand we need to run anyway, right? I think so. I think so. Apex remembers the other reason we came out here. Right. I turned to my parents. The people at the botanical gardens, they seem nice. And they, I think they have a part of your equation, something that your machine doesn't do that they know how to do. They were able to grow the plants, but they don't know how to deradiate them. Your your father sort of strokes his chin at that. Uh, you still have the filter on. Oh, didn't realize you could all hear it. Your your father sort of strokes his chin at that. Mm. I told yeah. them that if you wanted your equipment back, that we would be taking it back. But if you choose to at least look over their research, you might hit one or two of those breakthroughs you'd been working on for a while. Well... Is the area safe? Because last time we were over there, this happened. We cleared it out. We cleared the white razors that were in the area out, but there's no guarantee that more won't show. Hmm. We continue our research here. We have safety and security we go out there we may have the answers we've been looking for but it'll be no good to anybody if white razors come and finish the job we'll have to think we about will. it we'll have to see about dealing with the white razor problem then well we'll make our decision when uh, the time comes, or if any of these situations change, you let us know. I'm just... I'm just so glad that you're both safe. How do you think we feel? We came out here because we thought you and Bruce and gone the way of the dodo. We're dreads. We don't die easy. That's what... That's what Uncle used to say. Your mother sort of looks between the two of you. I'm sure he'd be proud to see both of you the way you are now. Apex nods, even though he's unsure if that's correct or not. Well... The longer we stand around here, the sooner a horde of super mutants is going to come marching from the east. I suppose we should keep moving. Glances at Apex. Oh, man, that's downer. Uh, yeah, we got a couple other things, too. 
and also figuring out a way about the white razors. Hmm. I have some idea, but I'm going to have to think about it. We do still have the issue of that courser to deal with. That I is know well. we were worried that it might have been stalking this area, but we still haven't seen any sign of it. Dr. Howell uh, sort of stands back up and he walks over to a uh, uh, he walks over to an old uh, radio setup that you are familiar with, Cynthia. And he begins uh, tuning the knobs and adjusting uh, the frequency of the radio. She watches intently. As he pulls his hands away from the radio, he simply stares at it for a few moments before all of you hear a Now what is that? Oh dear. Louise's eyes go wide and she does that scan of her own thing. <clears throat> Apex slips uh, his fingers into the rings of the claws of his gauntlet. You, um, Louise, you look at the frequency that, uh, Dr. Howell has, uh, dialed in and you copy it down on your own Pip-Boy and sure enough from your own Pip-Boy, you also hear doot, doot. <sighs> Alvin stands and pulls the heart stopper into just both his arms. Well, yeah, never a dull moment, is there? What's the we range, got, Dr. Howell? The range on this frequency is quite large. The more frequent the noise, the closer the courser is. How close would that particular uh, rhythm indicate? He listens to it a few more times to get it down. Judging by the frequency of the beeps, perhaps a few blocks away from our current location. Blocks. Louisa's face goes white, and she just, she goes block, she's, she too goes like, blocks? That's not a lot of reactionary time. Uh, so two to three hundred meters. Now. I think we need to get the fuck out of here, at least so nobody in here gets caught up in this shit. I agree. Find some place close by, set up an ambush. Is there anything that could help us, Dr. Howell, as we go into this fight? I believe your best bet may be to stay in here. Mine? All of you. And didn't you not want that, though? It's too late for that now. It already knows where you are. I could I'm still sorry. be searching the area. That is also true. 
I'm not sure how much time we have, but. Sorry, you were saying something? No, I, I was going to let you finish. I'm not sure how much time we have, but we do have some. If you want to stay here, we should prepare. And he... <clears throat> oh, sorry, go ahead. He goes over to the console once again, and... Uh, he... activates a projector. And let me take you over to... <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Wow. A map, a new map. It's a map, right. it's a map, it's a map, it's a map, it's a map. <laughs> it's a map. It's the map. It's a map. <laughs> Mail time. Uh, oh, wrong Louise, uh, Louise looks to Cynthia and um says, How are we supposed to pull this though, Cynthia? You and Kara, weren't we talking also about using the Corso to help get you to your own bodies and stuff? Well, that would be ideal. So I guess it's a matter of roughing How this we... thing up, but not yeah. so much that we destroy it. That's my question. Is there How anything we... in is there anything in this building that can emit a strong magnetic pulse, something that might disable it, fry its brain? Yeah, I mean, like leave the body lights. intact. But how do we set it off without frying all everybody else in here? That is, um, I have Doc just, Howell. That's, I, a, that's persuasion. I, 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 I look, I look over. Somebody organic would have to lead it into it. Indeed, I have, I have eliminated most of those <laughs> sort of devices for my own sake. How vulnerable are you to that, Dr. Howell? Like, I mean, if we were in the other side of the building, you know, over the place where the your guys have to make the makeshift bridge, would you be okay? Or is it everything connected to you, like the droids and whatnot? Any synth that is caught in the blast of an EMP wave would have its system... At most, its systems would be disrupted for a few moments. At worst, it would completely destroy it. Well, I just mean that if we were in the other part of the building, would you be okay as long as you weren't connected to one of your uh, proxies or anything like that? I believe I would be fine. Do you think it's do you think it's do you think it's safe to recall all your uh, do you think it's safe to recall all your uh, synths over to this side of the planetarium? We cross, and then you just recall the bridge and all of them over there. But we can go ahead and hold out the courser in the upper yeah, floor, yeah. maybe the ground floor. Come on. Come here. Hang on, the dog is loose. Understandable, Doctor. Dog take it down. is on the loose. Yeah. Oh no! Pup, pupper kisses. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. What were we talking uh, about? Uh, I was asking. Uh, I'll I'll just say it again. Do you think you'll be safer for? us to go ahead and cross over into the upper floor and the ground floor and you recall your sims into the planetarium? We can just go I ahead think, and hold her up? I think I would be safer, yes, but that would leave you all unattended. I'm not going to put my parents in the middle of this. They're already wounded. And looking in here, I can see a couple good ambush points for her. I think we might be able to utilize one of the stairwells right here to the upper floor, point the center We're, to the ground floor. 
We're in the planetarium, right? Presently. That is correct. You are in the planet. You are in the planetarium. All right, specifically on the first this, floor. This bridge is kind of out, and we use the robots to kind of create yes. the ant bridge. Okay. That is correct. I'll go ahead cool. and mark this off. That part of the that part of the uh, science center has been destroyed and collapsed. So we could either go ahead and have our venue be the upper ground and lower floor after you recall all your sims inside the planetarium. Or you move or you take everybody who's moving, move up to the top floor of this planetarium, and we can go ahead and hold them up on the bottom floor of this planetarium. I feel like fighting it in a confined space would only make it it would only give it an advantage. All right. Then let's go ahead then let's go ahead and make our venue be here. And I'll point at the upper floor. Looks big enough. And because mm. of my history, I think an ambush from the theater would be the most likely place. They'll be walking. They'll go ahead and stop at the bridge. The bridge will be out. They'll be thinking. And then we can go ahead and make our move, fight them right there. Connor, the first time we entered the building, the uh, what was the entrance we used? And how many entrances and exits are there? Presently. Um, is it just this one that's labeled? There, uh, down here is an entrance. Actually, hang on. Let me. Uh, there is an entrance right here on the map on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. The lower floor has uh you used for the the first time you guys came in here you used an emergency exit um that was located right here on the side of the lower floor okay and there is a street level entrance right here on the planetarium but you know that that is uh heavily boarded up and locked up and basically would not be accessible without one uh, alerting Dr. Howell um, to someone trying to breach in and two, giving him plenty of time to relocate. Right. Apex points to the uh, one by the T-Rex, remembering that that's where they came in. This area was relatively unguarded. We didn't get caught until we made it to the first floor. Good point. If this thing was to be strategic about its entry, it would probably use the same one. The other one looks as though it is... I mean, the main entrance, the one up front, I'm guessing there's windows and shit, and is also being more heavily patrolled, right? Uh, yes. The... The... Well, there are, there are plenty of windows on all three of these floors, but gotcha. Um, the most of them would be on the ground floor. I asked Doctor Howell, uh, pointing down there, if we were to set up an ambush down here, we might be able to use the environment to our advantage. We could lure him around many of the confusing-looking displays, set traps. If possible, would you be able to move some of your patrolling guards from that area to other entrances to make that one look like a more prime suspect? I could do that, yes, but if I have my synths patrolling on the outside, that may make us easier to find and give us less time to prepare. Hmm. Perhaps not patrolling on the outside, but something tells me this thing's too cautious to just... Wait, didn't he always have some patrolling on the outside? 
Like that that's what we saw the first time we walked up. And that was before he knew a courser was in the area. Fair. Hmm. It's either that or we go out and hunt it, but Oh no. I'm we need, think, we need to... I'm thinking the theater would be the best place. He also got that mm. problem of it turning invisible. Urshan, mm. what did you say? Do we have something for that? Some pain or something? I forget. Hmm, actually. Something like that would work. Or some dirt so it would leave tracks. Something for it to leave tracks with. Heck, even something like water or whatnot would work. I mean, if we, we could Maybe rig the entrances. Wet paint. Yeah, we could rig the entrances with to, and make it so that when it comes through, the paint gets on it. That's a start. Mm-hmm. Or just Turpentine might work, paint. too. Hold up this can of turpentine. Or just put wet paints or any sort of viscous fluid on the floor once it has to walk through it. Why not both? Mm. That could work. Dr. Hell, you got storage what? closets of supplies somewhere around here? Maybe from the previous occupants? Um... Yes, I believe there are some maintenance closets located around here. What are you trying to find? <clears throat> Anything they could go ahead and help hinder. The paint's actually a pretty good idea. I'm going to see if they have anything like textiles, paints, any liquid, any liquid materials, anything Stuff like that. We can go Stuff ahead and just. Old. Sorry, go ahead. We can go ahead and create some. Uh, we can go ahead and create some. Uh, just some falsehood traps. Go ahead something... and try to compromise its ability to stealth. Yeah, something that'll stick to it. So if it goes invisible, we can still see it, or at least see its tracks. Also, also, Dr. Howell, I, I know you said you got rid of anything that would impulse, EMP pulse or whatever, but is there anything we could use to jerry-rig something that would work in the same capacity? I don't know, I've got a lot of junk in my bag. Perhaps if you think you're resourceful enough, you could. <sighs> I mean, I've got... She kind of goes through her back, back and looks like... I still got, I got that fusion core. I got two microfusion cells. I got uh, electron packs. I don't know. Any of that? Also, compromising its ability to travel up here would be pretty good, too. Hey, the elevators up here. What kind are they? Are they hydraulic? They are electric, I believe. <clears throat> Where are the controls for that? I might be able to go ahead and temporarily uh, temporarily disable those. Wait. Wait a minute. They're electric. Alvin. Could we... Okay, I'm not a mechanic. You guys are the smart ones on this, but... Could we jerry-rig just the elevator to knock it out? Could we make it a big electric trap if it got inside? A smart troll before I do this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds me, awful God. dangerous. <laughs> How confident am I feeling with an eight? With an because eight? I've watched the shield. I know how to do this. But does Alvin know how to do this? <laughs> I mean, you you're confident that you could rig an EMP to the inside of an elevator as to what that would do uh you're seeing as how the elevator is powered by electricity putting an emp inside of the elevator it would definitely be sneaky but it also might knock out power to the elevator itself and then crush things <laughs> not if it got on the first floor True. I mean, elevator itself would probably just stop working. It wouldn't fall down unless you broke the cable. That's true. 
Mm. If it were a hydraulic elevator, you'd need to, like, get something at the bottom of it, because that's where the hydraulics is, but... If it uses the elevator, I can probably go ahead... Uh, I have a couple... I have a couple pulse mines. I could go ahead and pop off the... Uh, I can go ahead and pop off the panel for the uh, for the buttons. I can go ahead and arm it and place the button on top of the th on top of the third uh, on top of the top floor button. When they go ahead and press the top floor button, that pulse mine will go off. It'll disable it'll component. disable the it'll dis it'll disable the elevator and also go ahead and disable them. After which case. After all this is said and done, I will help you repair that elevator. The... It might be worth it to rig up anyway, but counting on it using the elevator would be foolish. Unless how about we, we lure it into it? Wait, how, what, what, what would you do to do that? <laughs> I, I love how Apex suddenly just got really, really just <laughs> like, real how, 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 yeah, how well, good. there's, there's. He also wants to know what the tactical advantage of fighting it in the theater is. Well, here's a here's a couple of things I'm thinking about. Now, are you curious about the theater first, or are you curious about the elevator first? Because I got a couple plans for either of those. Yes. All right. Let's start with the theater first. All right. Now, let's say the thing's invisible. This this plan I think will work pretty well. But it'll go ahead and make it so we engage this thing probably around here. But we have the entire but we have the entire back the upper floor to fall back to. We hide up in the theater, right? And now that little mother hubbard's gonna go ahead and walk over and see those bridges out. Now while they're thinking about how to go ahead and cross that, they'll probably go ahead and de stealth and go ahead and figure out how we can go ahead and get on over there. When it de stealths back going to be turned to us because it's going to be looking at that elevator it's not going to notice that we're there and that's where we can make our move we can go ahead and get a surprise spring on and as a for as a former you know what i'm pretty good at ambushes let's step over to the elevator real quick here now with the elevator to lure it in about the this one or this one either or... of the elevators would probably work but my eyes on this elevator right now so with that elevator this would have to be this would have to be done in a quick switch so i'd probably have to go ahead and loosen up the uh loosen up the control panel first of all it should be easy enough to access we would go ahead and have somebody go ahead and lure up into it and then go up the elevator could be any of us i don't want to go ahead and put cynthia in danger so i'd probably go ahead and elect myself i'll have the elevator open i'll go ahead and look at the thing go ahead and wink at it Go ahead and close the elevator. I'll be rushing toward us. As the elevator moves up to the third floor, go ahead and make the switch. When they go ahead and recall the elevator, step on down. They're going to hit the button for the top floor. Bam, that pulse mine's going to go off. One or two things that we're going to need to account for, Sean. Mm. One, that it doesn't just turn and go for the stairs instead. Two, and this is for people who are in the know on this particular little detail, but and she kind of looks at um at Dave. I assume Dave, we need to will him into existence. Dave, how you doing? <laughs> and uh, I think, uh God, it's okay, terrifying. my brother. It's okay, my it's okay. My brother's been here too. He's just been quiet. What's and up? she assumes she assumes <laughs> Doctor Howell as well, but she goes, um, you say this courser's pretty pretty bad already and whatnot. Um, I guess what I want to know is. How far can this thing jump? If we take out the bridge, can this thing just jump over the empty space? Can, heck, could it even just jump to the top of the planetarium and come down that way? Like, what are we working with here? That depends on what sort of augmentations it is equipped with. You if, said it. if it has enhanced musculature, then it could leap the chasm, but... I'm not sure which particular courser is coming. Uh, can I describe the one that I met? Uh, you, you certainly can. I will do that. Uh, 
I just want to like, uh, is it's been so long. So can I can I roll something for these physical details that I'm going yes. to describe? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, what would you like me to roll? Uh, smarts, I'd say. Smartsu, okie dokie. Let's see, that'll be 2d6 plus 1. And that is an 11. Mm -hmm. I am. You... I, I. I have a. I have a photographic memory. The memory of a artist. The memory of a man who has actively. Actually, I pull out the picture that I drew of him, <laughs> which is for my uh, reference art. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is uh, a little unfortunate because you remember that the courser at the time you met them was wearing a mask. Uh, you a did mask how... of, uh, yeah, like a <coughs> fucking leather face mask. It looked like yes. synthetic flesh. You saw it was sort of like rotting flesh stapled together to form some sort of ghoulish mask. Ah, oh, like the real leather face. Um, my beloved leather face. However, the you you do remember certain aspects of it. You remember it was. Uh, it had sort of a lithe figure to it. It had uh, amber-colored eyes. From what little you could see of the skin underneath, you could tell that uh, the the skin underneath was the color of a well-tanned person. And somewhat on the short side. Probably about uh, maybe Louise's height. I give those descriptions to Dr. Howell. Okay. Let's see. To see if they give him anything. Let's see if any, what he can make of that. I'll tell you right now, he probably doesn't know the exact courser, but just given from the context clues that you've given him, he rolled incredibly. Um, you mentioned it had glowing eyes. Yes, they were yellowish, orangish, amber, I guess. And that could be indicative of low light or even night vision. Makes sense. When I encountered oh it, we were in a darkened room. Hmm. The fact that it was wearing a mask tells me that it was not necessarily geared for combat, but more infiltration. So it probably has stealth capabilities as well. Apex now thinking to himself, man, I knew I should have taken it. <laughs> <sighs> That's a plus. At least it means we have a better chance of beating its head in. Well, that looks to Cynthia, you know, without... Cynthia panics head. a little. <laughs> without, without permanent head bashing, you know, just... Um, just birdies, a little? Little birdies flying around, you know, in a little circle. Ah. Yeah, yeah, that. Hmm. <laughs> I can do that. Let's see. So now he's at the Delta Combat. Good at flight, probably. Let's see. Not vision. Trayton. So anywhere if it's dim would probably not work. So, all right. That ambush at the theater is kind of a no-go. Well, if we're ambushing it in the hallway outside the theater, that isn't bad, actually. As long as we're not fighting directly in the theater. If we could set up some sort of barricade behind the opening of the theater. That way Cynthia and Louise could have cover while they fire on it. Meanwhile, we'd be able to attack it and hold it in place. Oh, alright. The old hammer and anvil, huh? I can go ahead and do that. I'll tell you what... 
Oh, that would be kind are we, of cool. Uh, are, are, we, are we able to draw on this map at all? Uh, I believe so. I don't think there's anything stopping you. Okay, we are. Hold on. Meanwhile, Bruce, if you could be hidden over here, cutting off any chance it has at escaping. After uh, it where, passes you. Oh, can, can you not see what I've drawn? Uh, where are you drawing it? Can you ping it? Yeah. Oh, hold on. I can if I switch to mouse. Ah! Um, Louise leans over to Apex and in a low voice sort of whispers, Apex, if we're getting your brother involved, we might have to admit that number one, he has power armor, and two, he's Brotherhood of Steel. Mm hmm. I, I, I say just kind of subcon. I, I, I just kind of like admit to that. I'm, I'm, I'm in planning mode right now. So the idea would be to attack after it gets to this point. Alvin and I will rush out from the theater entrance where Louise and Cynthia will be behind a barricade, ready to fire on it as need be. Bruce will be set up back here, hiding, waiting to cut off any retreat point. What would you say about me putting uh, putting some debris and whatnot in front of the barricade we're going to build in front of the theater? That way, when they approach the barrier to the theater, they go ahead and get a pulse mod. As long as Cynthia's not too close to it. Ooh. Yeah, we can cover that. How you feel about using your scoped rifle to go ahead and shoot over the barrier at a safe distance away, Cynthia? You think you're good with that? Should be. <clears throat> All righty. I'll have to go through and see how much I have left. I think I'm pretty go. low on rifle ammo, actually. She knows you're not really trying to, but Louise just does this thing of like, keep rubbing it in, why don't you? There were a lot of super mutants, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I'm actually out. No, you're not out. You shouldn't be out. I don't think. I gave you... Or did you use some in that last fight we did at the... Uh... I did use some in the last fight. Pretty inconvenient there. Then that, did, then that deter way. probably won't be for the best. I'll place, I'll place a pulse in mine. Hmm? Either way, if you are involved in this skirmish, Cynthia, if it does know a command that can set you offline, is there a way for you to deactivate your auditory devices? Cynthia turns to Dave. Um... He sort of gets a pensive look about him, and he sucks in his lips. Unfortunately, I think the only way to prevent uh, something like that happening is in just an absolute last resort. We may have to temporarily deactivate Cynthia, and I'm not sure what that will do. Well, do you think it before, would... right? It's it's less of a sure thing than a full reset, like what the recall code does still disrupts things inside of you. Right. Do you think it would be a safer bet for Cynthia to hang back here in the planetarium? Maybe firing from the other side of the bridge. Dave, I have a potentially stupid question. Okay. The, this kill switch is for Cynthia, right? Does that mean because it's bot? It's it's it's. I don't. Know. She looks to Cynthia like she's not sure if this is an insensitive term to use. Like, is it purely because of her chassis, the, the the you know the robot part? Yes, the Cynthia is. Or I guess what I'm wondering is, what if Kara was in control? No, that it's... wouldn't work either. It's it's. <sighs> Do, it's due my to my whole being, it's the specific parts that house 
the consciousnesses of Cynthia and Kara that if if the recall code is said, both of them are deleted. You could try disguising you, Cynthia, so it doesn't know it's you. I don't know. That thinking that may actually work, but Louise I'm not sure for how long. Face, like, Louise gets a smile on her face, like, "Oh, I said something smart! <laughs> Yay!" It 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 could work. Uh, that depends on how smart the courser is. I mean, if you say it might work, we should at least do it just to give if it, it better safe than sorry, I guess, right? What's the best <laughs> way to incapacitate this thing, too? Is a moment of confusion going to be enough to um, do something to it? Shut it down? Good. I was thinking striking it with the flat end of this thing, but I just half the heart stopper using the flat end of a stop sign, smacking it up against the wall. Maybe a heavy impact would go ahead and just shut it off. What sort of damage can be repaired versus what sort of damage can't be? We've seen Cynthia lose a leg and have it be reattached. What do we From need to avoid damaging for the body to remain intact? Actually, Dave, Dave sort of sort of strokes his like scraggly beard for a moment. Hey, Dave, I got a question actually too. Okay. Well, half of our big issue is it doing that kill switch. It would speak it or something, right? Yes, it's audible. All right. Do you know where its uh, voice box is? Can we get Apex or Alvin up on this thing and rip that Here, sucker out? Here's the thing that will solve both of your questions. Generation 3 synths, which is what the coursers are, mm -hmm. they are... They are, for most intents and purposes, basically human. Their voice box would be exactly where yours or mine would be. You rip that out, you can't speak, but it also risks irreparable damage. And we want to keep and we want to keep this thing intact. As much as possible, anyway. It's a difficult so situation. Harder to repair. Right. We would Shall need we... special equipment for that, and the only kind of equipment that could do those repairs is in the Institute. I think we need to all agree, though. I, I'm not taking a chance on that thing getting off kill switch. If it tries to go for it, I'm shooting its fucking throat out. Hmm. I'm thinking. To, I'm thinking. To, I'm thinking. A quick hit with the flat end of this up against the wall would be enough to go ahead and do it out. The X's I put on the map right here, here, mm -hmm. and here are where I want to go ahead and set up uh, two of the pulse mines I have. Uh, is you want to set up a pulse mine before? On, by the by. I got the frequency now, so I would assume yes. I just left it on there. Uh, okay. Quick strategic thing. You want to put a pulse mine back there where it might activate it before it's triggered the trap? Um. Oh, actually, you know what? You're right. Where's the eraser on this thing? Does an eraser exist? Can I grab my X? No. You know what? I'm just going to scribble that real quick. Where do you think we should place the second one? I'm thinking there. I think you slap. I think you slap it right on it while you're in melee with it. All right, and we'll keep. Th All right, and I'll just keep the X there just in case it tries to approach. Hon honestly, probably uh, probably the best thing to do is we would leave one here, like at the theater entrance in front of the uh, barricade, so yeah, that it would that's protect what the gunners. Thinking. Mm -hmm. like, I but can we'd stay have up. to set it up as we 
leave and attack. I can. I, I assume I can at least stay up close to the barricade, even with an EMP, right? Should be no reason you wouldn't be able to, right? Mm-hmm. So I can stay up close. It might, it might make sure. It might make our brains feel fuzzy, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm, Louise is going to leave her some of her more sensitive scavenging equipment somewhere safe so it doesn't get fried because I don't want to mess with, you know. Um, but once it's gone off, then Cynthia can come and join. So at least one of us can be up on the barricade at all times. And of course, there is always the alternate plan of having the organics on this side yeah. and then Cynthia standing on the other side of this bridge to make sure that it just does not have easy physical access to her. Mm-hmm. And she can still snipe from over there. Which the, which of those do you think will go ahead and work best? I can work with it's either. It's up to Cynthia. I, like, I... I uh, it's up to Cynthia what position she'd want to take. Yeah. How do you want to take this, Cynthia? Cynthia is dead. No! Oh, no. Then what are oh, we doing this for? Damn, it's it. super... Damn, the course are super fast. So now we're just going to smish it into paste. I'm just not sure what it's capable of. So, uh, I mean, everything's kind of a gamble. We kind of know what it can do, but... I suppose on the other side of that bridge is the best shot. I do have a pistol. Range isn't super long, but have enough Looks ammo, it. I could do something. Looks oh, do Dr. you not have Powell. any long-range weaponry? Nope. So I have a mag caster, and I could melt her. Louise looks to Dr. Howell. Um, I don't suppose you got any extra ammunition lying around? Um... At this time, I'm going to um, go ahead and each of you give me a strange roll. Okay. Okay. Okie pokey. How weird am I? Not Seven. very. That's a six. Seven. See, okay. Mom, I told you I'm not weird. <laughs> so that's... One, two, All right, three, four. and me... Is... If no, you no. say it a hundred <laughs> times a day, then you're definitely not weird. Yeah, that's, that's why I have a mirror. That's, that's, that's what mirrors are weird. for, Caitlin. <laughs> that's, uh... Louise if... is very weird. If so that is... Strange. I mean, strange. She, she, she talks to the dead. So that is six... I talk that is to six, one seven, dead. seven, eleven... It yep. doesn't change the fact that in that's, in my comic you're a in my comic you're a magician. I should be a that's expert. 31 altogether. Pretty much. Uh there is a failure, a minor success, a minor success, and a major success. So I'm going to roll really? a D4 and add four to it. And that will be the amount of hours you have before the courser finds you. That oh, is okay. strange. Oh. Oh. I'll roll this openly. Okay. Oh. <gasps> we have six you, hours. You have six, six hours before the courser okay. finds you. Not bad, not bad. Now, do I we will... as characters know this? <laughs> or is Dr. Howell I suddenly will... like, hey, six hours? I will give you <laughs> collectively six more things you can do to prepare so um, your first thing you're doing is looking for ammunition yeah i'm gonna oh, scavenge that... all of the bodies that i know are here alternately if any of his uh drones have long range laser rifles true uh, they, maybe they one do. could uh offer one <laughs> they do you know that they have some uh, pretty crazy looking laser rifles they're all white and shiny and like futuristic looking. I will also, uh, besides that, I will also roll to uh, look for ammo with Cynthia. I will roll scavenger on that one. 
Okay. I'm going to take a look at those uh, supply closets that Tal pointed out and see if there's anything I could use to rig into traps. Okay. Uh, Bruce and I are going to get to work building the barricade at the theater. Right on. So, if me so and are first, doing the same thing, does that count as one collective thing? I'll I'll say sure. I'll say sure. Okay. okay. Uh what do I need to roll for that? You're rolling wits. Louise is also rolling wits, but he can look for something specific because she's using scavenger. Cool. What you find Eight. may or may not be helpful to you, but we'll find out here in a moment. <laughs> Seven. Eight. Eight. Find out now. Those are both minor successes. So I like it. Let me just go and see what you find first and foremost. Uh, okay. Uh, Cynthia, you find an auto pistol with six shots in it. Okay. You basically have one magazine worth of uh, ammunition pew, pew. in this auto pistol. For sure. And... I know Louise would really want to find rifle ammo because it's you, not her fault that Cynthia's out low on it. Rifle ammo? Absolutely. Uh, what you would find is not 10 millimeter, all the way 308. You find. Hot oh, damn. Uh, you find. 20 rounds of rifle ammo. <gasps> oh, really? Oh. <laughs> Louise. Oh, I, I, just kind of... I, I rolled incredibly well. Oh my God. Cynthia will feel a tap on her shoulder and Louise will just be standing in front of her with a box in her hand like, is this about right? It was a ma if it was a major success, I would have rolled twice and given you the higher option, but I just rolled a 20, so... <laughs> Cynthia smiles that like a smile at Louise and gives her a, a bear hug. So no more holding it over my head, right? I will for the rest of your life. Damn you to hell. <laughs> <laughs> pat pat. All right. Uh Alvin, you're looking in the maintenance closet. You're looking for stuff that you can fashion. You, you said yeah. you're looking for paint, maybe? Uh, paint to go ahead and put above walls, to go ahead and compromise its uh, stealth capability. Um, wire for uh, wire for trip traps. Um, if we could just get like a of bunch nature. of wet paint on a, just get like a bunch of wet paint on a carpet that already looks the same color as the paint. Ooh. That would also that would also would work. Go ahead and roll me. Wits and then strange. Wits and then strange. All right, here's the wits. That's uh, a three. And there's a strange. That's a seven. That's a seven. Okay. Right. Unfortunately, it does not look like you find any paint. Uh, in this particular maintenance closet, Dr. Howell has told you that there are multiple. Um, so trouble. So you you can spend another hour and look for more paint. Okay, I'll do that. You've, you've used two of your six. Uh, so you've got four this... more. And that's for each of us? No, collectively. collectively. Oh, right. I was really hoping that that would have changed in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were going like, to forget, and then, you know. Uh, okay. Scary! 
Uh, uh, wait. Bruce and Bastion said that they were going to try and build a barricade. So, yes. uh, I'd, I'd, I'd get a start on it while he went and collected his armor, which would honestly probably make the job easier, too. Okay. Is there... Is the... Is the dirt outside pretty dry, deserty-ish? Yes, very much so. It hasn't rained in a couple of days. Y'all, I don't know if we need paint. Why don't we just get some silt, cover the ground. Every time it takes a step, it'll make an impression. Alvin will look at Cynthia, snap his fingers, and get right ready with a couple of uh, with a couple of beakers and containers. Okay. What uh, what color are the uh, floors around the theater, if you have that information? Uh, I probably would actually have that information, seeing as how this is a real place. Because if they are light-colored floors, that might work. If they're dark-colored floors, less likely. Uh, uh. Even, even if they were either, though, you would be able to hear the granulation crunching under someone's foot, even if they're light-footed. Maybe. Let me see here. Let me just look at my... Uh, let me look at what I've done here. What have you done? What have you done? Open your mouth! Our goal is to be able to see him, though. I mean, optimally. The the floors of this place are sort of... Uh, they They are gray. On the are... lighter side or on the darker side? Uh, uh, are, are, are they in day mode or night mode? <laughs> I'm I'm doing more research for you as we speak. No I worries. Think, I still think even regardless of the floor color, if so, you put dirt on it, you, you gonna see it. So here's the thing. Uh, you can... The the seats of the theater you're in are red. The floor is black, actually. But you do know that this theater has a big projector that basically takes up the entire wall. And so when this place is lit up, it's lit the fuck up. So you could probably very easily see if dirt is being disturbed if you keep the lights on in the theater. I'll take your word for that, but we aren't fighting in the theater. We're fighting okay. out here. To answer your question, then, the floors are black. Then, yes, okay. we will absolutely see dirt. If we cover... I mean, it would take time. And I would say we would probably ask... Cynthia would ask Dr. Howell if we can use every non-engaged synth that he has on hand to help us cover the floors in dirt. Like all of them. <laughs> uh, Dr. Howell figure out bit, how much of a clean freak he is. He's a bit confused. Uh, yeah, I, well, he doesn't he doesn't have to read. Even if he were a germaphobe, he's a metal man, so he doesn't really Oh no, uh, I have the cold in my robot lungs. If we've got a synth that can stealth then the only way to be able to track its movement would to be able to hear it and see where its movements are. Dirt on the floor would give us that information, would it not? I suppose you may have a point. You are more versed in combat than I am, so I will defer to your judgment on this. Unless you have any other plans of any way to get an advantage against this thing. Ooh, I got a hell of an idea, too. By <clears throat> all means. Oh, it's just for fighting the thing. Well, I noticed I have this stop sign, right? And I got this pulse mine, right? It's not exactly an upgrade, but... And Alvin will give you just the widest smirk as he spins a bottle of Wonder Glue in between his fingers. Stickiest stuff ever. 
just glue this to the yo, activate it, and just swing it into the darn thing. You you figuring about pitching a pulse man at this thing, Earthshine? No, it's a long. No, this this is basically a long stick, and I'm going to go ahead and put a pulse mine on the end of it. Basically, turning into a pulse hammer. One-time use pulse hammer. Hmm. Yep. Louise gets the dish, and she you know, just suddenly just like, "Oh, Sean, I've never been more attracted to you than I am right now." Jeez. Yo, oh, <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Hell <laughs> yeah, it is. I can't wait. Once she go, and once she goes off, ain't no problem. Take a screwdriver, go ahead and scrape her off. Easy peasy. Okay, so to be clear, you're using another you're using one of your hours. One. You're using one of your hours to scatter dirt all over the upper floor. If yeah, that's pretty where... much as much of as as much of the area from these stairs back here to here as possible in order to see when it's where yeah. it is if it's stealth okay uh, uh i guess just to go out and shovel a bunch of soil out there i guess that would be a body roll whoever would like okay. to who's to put a time oh, and effort to this me probably since it was my dumb I'm, idea i I'm really hope this dirt what? comes in handy dirt Ooh. don't fail me now 12 nice Alrighty. I don't Your tire. Your skills so. are adequate. Thank you. Uh, that is a major success. And I'm therefore... very successfully dirty. Nope. Take it back. Nice. Take it back. Nice. Mm. Oh, late. Mm. Been recorded really, on the internet you, for posterity. Anyway, you're, just you're really you're else? freaking out. I'm sorry. You're freaking out about that after I let down. After I set down girthy bagels. That's that's your ah. embarrassment. You know what? Yeah, you know what? It's fine. I um, don't need girthy to bagels. It's fine. Girthy bagels with a girthy, schmear. Girthy bagels in Dave's the... girthy bagels. Schmear. And that, you manage to cover most of the upper floor in oh, wow. dirt. I mean, oh, you, wow. you devote you devote an hour to it. Yeah, that's a lot of dirt. And 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 I'm and I'm guessing we have like other robots helping. <laughs> Doctor Howell's just yes. Yeah, so Doctor Howell did up. did lend you some of his synths to just scatter dirt all over his floors. He's just like what what happened? Take the. <laughs> <laughs> if I find a push broom, uh, you, if I find a push broom after this, I'll sweep it. I'll sweep it. <laughs> do you want me to roll anything for the barricade that we're building? Um. Yes. Go ahead and roll me. This would be a wits, I guess. Uh, build this Alrighty. barricade. Habushka. Uh, that is also a twelve. Uh, also a twelve. Uh, I, the I, barricade. I get, it, I get it. Nice. It's. <laughs> can can I describe what I would do? Sure. Absolutely. I noticed there's a dining area out there. I would repurpose a number of the tables and chairs to brace it. I would find something very heavy to roll back, like maybe some sort of a, a metal-backed cart in order to provide for proper absorption of any sort of projectiles that might be fired back at that area. And I would use any of the, like, sheer curtains that the theater area might have to kind of like drape and create almost kind of like a, a gillied veil over the entrance. So you can't quite see through it very easily, but you can see easily the other way. Fantastic. Yeah. It, you, you put your mind to it and precisely what you wanted to do with this barricade is exactly what happens. Uh, it is, it yes. is shrouded. It is sturdy. Uh, and you are quite happy with your job building this barricade. I, I brush the abnormal amount of dust off my hands and realize first, how dusty the room is now. <laughs> further contributing to the amount of stuff on the floor. Not a, not a lot. But, so uh, much it floor does stuff. Inform. Okay. Next up, uh, Alvin wanted to try and attach a pulse mine to... The heart to the clock stopper, or what is, was the heart stopper? Heart stopper. Heart, heart stopper. stopper. Yeah. Yep. Clock I got the wonder glue. I got the pulse mine. Right I got on the heart stopper. Go ahead. And I also and... have the upgrade feet. So, well, there you go. 
in that case, I I don't believe you need to roll for that, do you? Let me look. Let me look at your sheet. Let me give it a little look. Look at my things. The, the perks and whatnot I took are on the top. I'll look at your thing. All right. Check my you notes, Mr. Connor. You may attempt to upgrade a piece of gear. Roll smarts. On a result of 10, you can successfully modify a piece of gear within the span of a day. Uh, yeah, uh, this this will be... You're, you're devoting an hour to it, and it's relatively slapdash, and it's temporary is the biggest thing. So, yeah. yes. Go ahead and roll smart. Oh. Uh, okay, between that. 7 and 9... Doo -doo. Um... Right. I'm thinking of um Do do you have how much wonder glue do you have? Oh. Cuz yeah, on a have... on a minor success Let's see. I have I can I can I need, a, a few, I need to consolidate this. A few things can happen. I will say I have a full thing of wonder glue. Yeah. You have a if if you've got more wonder glue that you want to spend on this, I will say that you can get it done in an hour and it will work the way you want it to. Or Absolutely. you can save you can save your wonder glue and have it kind of work, but it be a little slapdash and maybe something could go wrong when you swing this thing. Or you can devote yeah, another hour to it and try it again. I would. Alvin's proud about his creations. That's what he used to do when he worked for the Right Razors. Okay, so so which one so, of those options are you taking? I'm using the Wonder Glue, baby. I'm using that. You're glue. you're using more Wonder Glue. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you you use up this uh, very valuable resource in the wasteland, and you make certain that this pulse mine is attached to the heart stopper, steady and sturdy, and you know that it is going to stay on there and activate when you need it to, and not a second before. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, mind. I wouldn't mind using this valuable resource. It's for Cynthia, after all. Oh, fair enough. Of course, very sweet gesture. Um, right on. Uh, that I believe leaves you with two extra hours. Is there anything else you would like to do before? Uh, you you hear you hear the frequency of the beeping become more frequent do we want to try and rig any of the doors that it comes in with something to fall on its head in case it the floor idea doesn't work something that will coat it with something that'll help us see it even better mm. that depends if we do that it might put its guard up higher if we're trying to catch it with its guard as low as possible You want me to bury this other pulse mine in the dirt um, in front of your barrier? Wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, I can do that. They activate it after. We should only activate it after we've jumped out, though. That's what is that the last one we got, or do we have one more? Uh, well, how many did you have in your inventory? I had three. I gave you one. One of them is glued to my heart stopper, and the other one I have basically free floating right now. Don't worry about okay, the so X's. There's a... a possible places to throw those. Oh yeah, no, I'm just saying we uh, we have those two options. We have one that would essentially protect the snipers a bit if in case it decided to go into melee over there, mm -hmm. and one that would basically be set off as soon as it goes over to check the bridge. Although that one it might notice anyway, so right, probably true. best to protect them at the entrance of the theater. Okay, then I'll do just that. Unless we want to spend some time disguising the one at the foot of the bridge a little better. Mm, I think it would be I best mean, to protect you guys regardless. Yeah. You, also, we you... still haven't established whether... Uh, also, we still haven't established whether Cynthia will be back mm. behind the barricade or on the other mm -hmm. side of the bridge. I was I'll, gonna stand, be... I'll stand where the X in front of the bridge is. It'll have to go through Jaraxxus. <laughs> 
you you mentioned that you wanted to put a pulse mine in either of these spaces before I rolled for the amount of time you have left. So I can say you can do that for free. You can choose oh, okay. which of That's those nice. which of those spaces that you want to put the pulse mine in. Uh, is it you? You wanted to put it here. This is where you've marked it. So uh, it, it yeah. would probably be like. I mean, tactically, it makes more sense in front of yeah. our snipers to make it harder for them to get attacked. I think that would. I think that would be just. I think that would be just the way. And then buried in. And then buried in the dirt. It would. You know. It would step up into the dirt and then go ahead and get pulsed. Yeah. I mean, unless you have something else for Cynthia to, uh, not Cynthia, uh, Louise to help with, I am going to go ahead and load up my Madcaster with a shot just to have that prepped. Don't know if I'm going to use it because it's going to do a lot of damage and we don't want to do a lot of damage, but I just want to prepped and ready in case. Right. Right on. Um... So you've got two hours. And Dr. Hell, <laughs> Dr. Hell tells you the ba based on the frequency of the beeps that we probably have two hours until it finds us. It is quite he's, close. Uh, ape. I assume he's absconded off in the in the planetarium area, and he's talking through one of his proxies. Yes. Uh, Louise will sort of turn. It's like, well, we got all this done. Um, I don't know if you got any other ideas of what we might do. Let's see. Got that set. Yes. Hmm. I'll look over at Dread and Apex and shrug. Disable an access point somehow. There's only one way up here to this area. Above game, does Dread have his uh, power armor back? Yeah, he would have uh, gone yes. and got that while I got started on the uh, okay. theater. Thing. Yeah, he's he's sitting in the position where you wanted him to. He's he's right here. I want to investigate the um, I want to investigate the uh, the elevator control panels real quick here. Um, okay. Just from the way I'm thinking of just elevator control panels, elevator control panels. Uh, we had this with the uh, pressure valve back in the sewers, and then we were just like, the Fallout world has less safety features, so feel free to walk with me on this. Uh, but elevator control panels, uh, I'm, they sometimes have like uh, like an emergency shutoff switch. It's normally something with like a key or something like that. Do these mm -hmm. control panels have anything? Uh, do these control panels have anything like that? Uh, they do have an emergency shutoff, yes. Oh, look, uh, what is it like? Is it like a push button or is it like a keyhole? Uh, I can look up exactly what it Actually, is. Actually, I have an idea of something I can okay. do. It is, it is a button. You, you see there's sort of like a, uh, there's sort of like a key dial that has like one through nine and, and not, not exactly one through nine, but you, well, it lists the floors and then there's like uh the emergency door open and then emergency shut off uh, with this a big red button to trigger those emergency shutoffs that'll go ahead and turn off those elevators so that uh so that we can guarantee that the course will go through the stairs right on uh you trigger the emergency shut off uh, on the elevators, the you you see the lights on the elevators all become red, mm -hmm. and uh, you you devote you devote some time to doing that. Uh, the elevators have been disabled. All right, awesome. And you've also got... going back to also going back to our sewer conversation. Do you know how much it horrifies me that those machines do not have bleed off valves? <laughs> 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 um, while Alvin's doing that, Louise will go to Apex and say, Hey Apex, uh, you can be doing a lot of stealth and whatnot during this yourself, huh? Depends how direct the combat is. I might not have the time. Why? Well, do you think you or your brother are gonna be stealthing more? My brother will be hiding out front. 
Well, I guess what I'm getting at is um, she'll pull out the uh, Chinese armor special ops training manual and hand it to Apex and say, maybe you need this more than I do if you're going to be up front and personal. I, I sit down crisscross style and start looking over the magazine. What what would this do if I absorb its information? For one encounter after reading, you get plus one to any rolls involving stealth. So with your bonuses, that would basically mean that you can't fail. And this is all this only works once. One Correct. encounter. For one encounter. Which is After exactly that, what this would be. <clears throat> Funny book. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm just imagining like I'm staring at his face. Or was I ever really here? Stealth. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to imagine you sit down, start reading, and suddenly just fade into nothingness. And Lewis is like, yeah, that's about what I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the apex never ex the apex never existed. He was just an he was just a legend. You fade out of existence. You see Dave in the space between realms. Oh my god! Oh hey, you're here too like now. Oh hey, <laughs> Bellatro. <laughs> <laughs> do I do do I, do, I, do you want me to teach you how to scream into existence? <laughs> like the sun, that screaming sun <laughs> rising into existence. <laughs> I'm trying to think if this combat will be the most useful version of it. Or if it would be more useful to have that when we need to place a crown on a certain super mutant's head. Up to you. Mm, considering I will hold on. I, I will. I will hold on to this. Wait, then give thank back. you kindly for it. <laughs> give, give it back, back then. then. No give and no give backsies. <laughs> Damn. Right no. Fine. I mean, he is stealthy. This is research material for, for the Apex. Sorry. What what was the magazine called? Uh, Chinese Army Ops Training Manual. If it Chinese makes my stealth checks, it, yeah. If it makes my stealth checks nigh invulnerable. Being able to sneak up on something like that would be very, very, very useful. Yeah, the but Chinese Army Special once. Ops Training Manual. All right. It has joined the fanny pack. Mm-hmm. You've got one hour left. Uh, let's see. Um, I've done pretty much everything I would do. I'm like, I'll, I'll help anybody else out if they need brawn for something. But at the moment, I'm just, I'm visualizing a fight in my brain. Do we want to go so far? I'm shadow as to, like, boxing. Completely, do we want to go so far as to completely cut the elevator cables? Because I can picture this thing like just opening the top and climbing up in case it suspects us. It's kind of still Dr. Howell's place. <laughs> Doctor how also, it, also, also, doesn't he? Also, let's let's be honest. If it were to climb up an elevator and pry open the doors, that is the least stealthiest approach it could take. Oh yeah, we'd hear it a mile away. That does give me uh, an idea though. It's I feel uh, like we've done what else is there? Uh going back to the uh supply cabinet and whatnot. Would it be possible to go ahead and uh, put some of the shelves and stuff uh, in some of the hallways? Uh, not some of the hallways, but in some of the staircases. That way we could he definitely hear some rattling when it has to go ahead and climb over that stuff. Uh, you're wanting to poo do what now? Okay, so... Put, put uh, stuff just in the stairwells? Yeah, put some stuff in the stairwells like... Um, uh, with less supply closets, maybe like some metal shelves, uh, just some clattery stuff, uh, things like that uh, in the stairwell that we could possibly hear if it makes some noise that has to climb over it or what have you. You can have my use or alternately needles. or alternately clog up. Let's see how many staircases lead upward. Some if leftover stuff in the dining up, area. Yeah, it, yeah, if we just clogged up one of these stairwells, like... 
You may it would have probably like... be best to claw. It, it would probably be best to clog up this one, because that's the one that Bruce is hiding next to. So that way, it would have to come up this one, and Bruce might be able to see him. As I said, I have three used psycho needles. I will just add that to the debris. Just poof. <laughs> Chuck it down. Just open the door. Chuck it down the stairs. There Give us some tetanus. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like San Francisco. You, you know, I, I, I agree with what you're. Uh, I'm picking up what you're putting down, Lanny. I, I, I think that would be a swell place. I think that would be a swell place to clog up. Yeah. So we just shove a bunch of tables and chairs down that stairwell, basically making like whatever the last landing is of it difficult to cross. Uh, I assume we're we're on our last little chunk of time here. That is correct. This would be our last hour, yeah. Uh, Cynthia's gonna gather up the crew. <laughs> so, uh... Get all my shit loaded. Everyone's, like, putting bullets in and, you know, double-checking all their gear. Picking Cynthia's, hair out uh, of their ears. A little awkward. Well, everybody, hopefully this goes smooth. And best case scenario, Kara and I will get to split. Takes a look at Dave for a moment. But if things don't go well, can y'all tell Point Man? It'll be an honor to. I we can do. Won't that. Have to. Things will be fine. Aggressive possibility. Aggressive possibility. Pis po Aggressive positivity. There it is. Come down. Not with against that right it. Now. I'm just. Ah. Uh, just want to be ready. If uh, anything goes wrong, look through my things. There's there's a letter in there. I'll make sure. If anything, do if anything does go wrong, I can do that for you. Thanks. No problem. My word's my bond. And uh, Dave? Yeah? Kara's too upset to come out right now. Believe it or not, I think she's scared. I'm scared too. But I've seen you guys do crazier things. <laughs> Fair point. Where are, where are we putting Dave in all this? Uh, I'm <laughs> hiding <laughs> with the rest of the people. That makes sense. Unless you he's, want he, me yeah, to he's, he's with fight. He's, Dave. He's with the civvies. <laughs> he uh, faces out of existence. I <laughs> love and appreciate you, but combat is not your strong suit. I love and appreciate that you recognize that. Oh, I got a favor <laughs> then, Dave. Uh-huh. Uh, Louise reaches into her pack, grabs the fusion core, grabs the electron packs, grabs the fusion cell her microfusion cells just because those are the three things she worries might get hit by the mp M M emp and she also takes out the skull and hands it to him do you mind looking after phil i don't want him in this yeah sure all right phil don't worry you you just hang with dave phil i'll be fine i just don't want you to don't want things to get crazy with these EMPs and all that stuff. Also, that's why I'm giving you that stuff, Dave, because I just don't have the science head to know whether or not Mike got hit or not. And that's just via valuable, you know? Phil decays nervously, but understands. <laughs> sort of sounds like gay nervously. <laughs> I love that. Please we'll check her pit boy again, see how that signal's getting. The signal is quite frequent now. You 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 hear it basically like doot, 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 doot. 
sort of as almost the, like uh, almost like a heart rate monitor matching your your own pulse. Louise will go as the tempo just... of it quickens. Oh, sorry. She, Louise will go ahead and just turn it off because let's face it, that's just going to be noisy. I think we better get. I was going to say as then. the tempo. As uh, the tempo of it would have quickened, Apex would have kind of like taken a deep breath, stood up, started doing some squats and a bit of stretching. Alvin just stretches backwards and uh, has the uh, heart stopper temporarily, the bot stopper, uh, in his uh, in his hands. I'm going to go ahead and set up shop over there if that's the same with you. I'll run out of the corner. They won't be. Ex they won't be expecting a. <laughs> they won't be expecting Wait, where, where a former raider with a stop sign. Hey, where are you? Where are you setting up shop? Right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run around the corner and then just go ahead and just ping it. Well, hey, one Arshan, of the reasons I put. One, hold on. That's one okay. of the reasons I put the veil here was because it would be harder for it to see us, and its back would be turned to us as it walked past us. Okay, then let's go ahead and set up shop there then. Yeah, we're. We're basically Sounds hiding funny. in the theater in yeah in front of the barricade where the two like the snipers will be behind the barricade. Yeah, oh, right. And I'm 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 behind the barricade, right? In the theater. With me. If you're, using a, if, you're if you're using a gun, then yeah. 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 So right. I assume I assume you left an opening for us, right? I mean, you'll have to climb over the barricade. The point <laughs> yeah, of the barricade yeah. is to be but hard to cross. I just like the idea of like, there, we've done it. We've barricaded it. How do we get in? Shit. <laughs> I mean, it's like a, it's like a chest high wall. I built good. I rolled a twelve. <laughs> and uh, before they would have left uh, the room with uh, Doctor Hal to get all in position, um, if anyone is paying attention, I guess uh, should they roll to see this small interaction, Connor? If you want us to, or if you're I trying think to I hide it, uh, then you, yeah, it would be a extent. wits roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh. Nine. Eh. Eh. That's four. I see nothing. Also a nine from the apex. Um. Cynthia will. Uh, share a very quick glance with Dave and Dr. Howell and all of them will kind of give a short nod in response. That's it. All right. And very well. Good to go. We'll go back to the theater and start climbing over. So to be to be clear, you're, what you're doing with your last hour is you are barricading the steps. Yes. Just, yes. Yep. Just, sho just shoving sure a bunch of just 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 to make sure that these steps are the ones that are easiest to access. These ones are accessible but hard to access upwards to the top floor here. Alrighty. I'll clap Apex on the back as we're walking toward the barricade in the theater. You know, I can't wait to go ahead and read the episode you're going to write about this. Mm. I have titles in mind. Ooh. Give me one real quick. Mm. I'm still ah. workshopping them. None that I'm stuck <laughs> with yet. Hey, no trouble. That's going to be something to look forward to. It's going to be good, Apex. All right, Ershan. Crooks a finger at him. Come give me my good luck sugar before I go in there. All right, Starshan. Here you go. And I go ahead and just give her a quick, give Louise a quick smooch. Go ahead and knock him dead, kid. Is this on the lips? Yeah. Louise blinks oh, and she was just God. like, Louise blinks several times. She was like, uh, yeah, well, um, I mean, she sort of leans up and bumps foreheads because that's what she actually meant, but she's not. She's just like, she's like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go. Yeah, mm, uh, sort of doing you that see sort Cynthia of thing. Slide into view behind Alvin, <laughs> staring at Louise. These are just very awkwardly going over the barricade, like, yeah, that's time to fucking shoot. Ow, fuck. Okay, um, no, I got it. No, I'm good. Don't, don't worry about me. I, I got this. Oh, look. Got... 
falls in on the other side, like with a little thump, thud, like, ah, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I'll look over at uh, Cynthia when Louise curls over the barrier. I'm really nervous, you know? I just figured, you know, she could use Why a not now? lot more than a forehead touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. Cynthia, <laughs> <sighs> you coming? I'm coming. All right. I was potentially thinking death droid doomsday. Apex says, being completely socially unaware of the <laughs> interaction. <laughs> death droid doomsday sounds real good. Mm. All right. Rely on you to watch my back, Cynthia. I gotcha. As you all prepare Alrighty. for the inevitable, at this point, encounter with the Courser, we're going to take a brief break. Yep, yep. We don't have mu right, too I'm much, on. too much longer <sighs> left in the episode. We're going to have right. a very brief interlude here before quick we five, get into quick whatever, five. <laughs> whatever quick happens five, quick next. Five. Quick, quick five. five. Quick five. All right. Quick five. All right. BRB. I am here. Whew. What's up? Welcome. I'm back. Oh, thank you. I'm back as well. Whoop. Whoop, whoop. Do 
doing my best not to eat the second Reese's peanut butter cup egg. Mm. Egg. Reese's Do it anyway. egg. No, I'm I wanna currently save it for eating tomorrow. a rabbit. A chocolate rabbit. <laughs> Sorry. I want to save it for tomorrow. So I have one. <laughs> my arm. Uh, I have a, you mean I have... your head? She ate my squeezing arm. <laughs> I have Listen. a peanut butter bunny downstairs. Ooh, oh my nice. god. They make Reese's peanut butter. I made butter it cup. myself. Pe oh, you ma never mind then. You made that. That's probably really good. My sister's I'm making experimenting. Eggs I'm tomorrow. experimenting with a I'm experimenting with my peanut butter fudge recipe. Mm -hmm. That that Hell's Kitchen um besides being pretty good, they had like have you had the the mallow cups they have there, Alani? Lanny? It's been a while, but I think Lani. so. It's fine. Like, I don't correct you, so that's on me. Like, um, because they home make their own peanut butter and stuff, and like put mm -hmm. marshmallow in the middle of it. That's just like this. Yeah, they they scratch they scratch make everything there. It's nuts. It was yeah, it was pretty good. I had like that pasta zozona or whatever it's just it was. Wild. Mm -hmm. They even had weed on the menu. That was hilarious. What? They did a whole a whole weed. Not they, even they ju it, they just weed. they just legalized it in Minnesota, weed. so a bunch it of restaurants are adding to do it. With yeah, it's not like food or anything. It's just here. What? section of weed. Would you, you like can, it? You can order weed at restaurants. Yeah, not weed surprised. gummies. Yep. And they had weed gummies, some tincture. And it's just there. It's not like any kind of, hey, it's part of the part of the food menu. It's just like, would you like this? <laughs> would you like to order more yeah. food in 20 minutes? Would, would you like this food to taste even better? I, I live for the day when we can not only have like a wine menu, but they also have like, and also we have our very lovely cannabis section. Oh, yes. Can you give me a sousaw of Maui Wowie, please? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, g yeah, give me that Kush flight. Uh, no, I would deep, like no, these deep nachos. Purple is what to, I always went for. I would like these nachos to taste extra munchy. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I remember, the, I remember the craziest bake I ever had was like, I don't know, I woke up, my shirt looked like <sighs> I was like Bruce Banner again after being the Hulk. I don't know what happened. And I was covered in bags of marshmallows, like empty bags of marshmallows. Oh my. What the fuck were you doing? I Straight up greened out, sounds like. I was greened out and I was uh, eating a lot of marshmallows. Wow. It's just... Who knew? The maybe the silver, maybe, maybe the marshmallows are the silver bullets that killed the beast. I became. <laughs> anyway, who's ready to kill a robot? Yeah. Dude, I am so well, ready to kill a robot. Dis, 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 disable a robot. But not Cynthia. Hopefully. Uh... <sighs> It got quiet, like eerily quiet. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. Are we ready to get back into it? Yeah. Yes, sir. No, I forgot to have Alvin to fucking repair my armor another round. Dang it! All right, so Ho to be clear, hopefully in this situation you won't be getting attacked. Mm. To be clear, the four of you are huddled in the theater, or yeah, like very close to the entrance here. Like Alvin and I are basically just kind of behind the blackened veil, and there's like a barricade just behind where. Cynthia and Louise would be perched in in my head anyway. Does Cynthia need does Cynthia need to be farther away in case of the EMP? Mm. I'm guessing it, it has like a least. I'm I'm guessing it has like a ten foot range ish like effect. I mean, if she hears it, that's the thing. The EMP. You hear the, the kill EMP switch, not the EMP. A... Oh, not the EMP. Sorry, I was thinking about the kill switch, not the EMP. Yeah. As long as you're far enough from the EMP, you should be fine. Maybe case, we should get you some earmuffs. <eah. Yes, just earmuffs. That's all. That's all I need. Would that Plug work? Ears. 
St <laughs> stuff him with I cotton. Holy Yusuke, you're a meshy. Why not? Uh, like Mike from Star Tropics. Put bananas in your ears. Just put your fingers in your ears and go la 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 A banana in your ear. Put a ripe banana right into your favorite ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm old. Me too, dude. I mentioned Star Tropics. <laughs> Fight. Star Tropics. Uh, okay. Anyway, anyway. So yeah, that's ba that's basically where we're huddled up, ready to ambush. Oh, yes, sir. You you take a few brief moments. As you hear from a radio in the distance, the coarser radio signal. Louise switches off her pit, switches that signal off because, again, noisy. Signal goes quiet. Apex. Apex takes one more deep breath, exhales slowly through his mouth, and watches the ground for any signs of disturbance. Anyone who would like to can make a wisdom, or not wisdom, uh, wits roll. Oh yeah, God, seven, damn. I should have slowed down. Maybe the algorithm would have been friendlier. Seven. Eight. Oh, God. The, uh... Quits. I lost my... <laughs> I had it un tucked underneath my Discord thing. Where are you, my child? There you are. Seven. And all minor successes. You hear something. Feel alone. You all hear something. Couple fours below you. The low droning of what sounds like a bunch of noise. Apex slowly lowers his ear to the ground to try to get a better sign of what it might be, closing his eyes and just kind of placing his ear to the floor. Alvin's white knuckle grip tightens around the pole of the heart stopper. Cynthia steadies her rifle, but keeps her eyes scanning the horizon. Shotgun ready. Is there, uh, can I discern anything from listening closely to the ground? Unfortunately, with your role and how high up you are and how much steel and noise dampening between yourself and the source of this noise is, it's hard for you to tell. But it just sounds like a lot of noise beneath you. So not so much a drone, just, more like scuffling? Just... It, it is it is sort of like a scuffling, yes. Um, just random frantic noises that pierce the eerie silence of this place. Could I roll to see if I can discern if that sounds like a, a struggle going on? I would say if you want to get a better idea of what is happening outside of the theater, you would need to exit it. No, I don't think I'm going to risk that. I will stay put and I will just listen like everyone else. Same. You, uh, it does sound like it's from beneath us though, right? Uh, yes, you... I'd say with your minor successes, you can determine that this is whatever is happening is on the lower floor. That's why it's so hard to hear. So 
Something has its attention down there. Or something is off. Why is it being so noisy if it's so stealthy? I don't know. I just don't know. Should we hold here and stick to the plan, or should somebody go take a look? I would trust you to do that, Apex. You're the best at stealth in it without of us all. Let's count count backwards from 60. And once you hit zero and it's still going on, go take a peek. Okay. I we'll listen I listen you. to the ground. No, if it gets past me, they'll need to be defended. You got it. I I listen to the ground like just as the sound continues. Could I get a, a I don't know. I I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep listening and counting down from 60. Okay. As you're you're taking you're biding your time and you're continuing to listen. Uh give me another wits roll. Yeah, seeing if I can make any more sense of the sound. Just Apex? That's a 12. Not that it That's matters. A 12. <laughs> nope. He's you got can, it. <laughs> you close your eyes and continue to listen. And you, ev even though the area around you is sort of sound dampens just due to the nature of it being a theater, uh, from the entrance, which is open, you can hear more clear noises beginning to come in. You hear... Voices. It sounds like a conversation is happening. What? You. It's commute. Sorry, I'll, I'll let you finish the description first. You hear. Uh, you hear two distinct voices. Not here either. Then we move to the next floor. We miscalculated. There are two, at least. That's not good. Two cents? It... They might not both be cents. <sighs> what the fuck is going on? Mm. They're searching. They it haven't figured out our plan yet. There's only one way they can go. All right then. I will also say with your with I'll... your major with your major success, I will also say you hear <laughs> just a cacophony of oh, growls and grunts. No. Also, oh, no. there are multiple ghoul. Also, there are multiple ghouls. Oh, for fuck's sake! Sh what the hell? Are there any Alvin? I, yeah. I, I I turn and I look up. You focus on the robot. I'll try to handle the organics. Leave it to me. Do we have enough time to maybe... Should we let Dr. Howell know? How would we? Not that I know if any of his drones are close enough. <clears throat> There's no time. Uh, all, all, of his, all of his synths are pulled back into the planetarium, defending that place and also your parents. <clears throat> They I'm are going to go inform my brother. Oh, sorry. I was just going to add they they are basically the last line of defense to keep Dr. Hal and your parents safe. And Dave. Dave is there too. And Dave. Dave. Dave is there too. <laughs> and Dave. Dave. Poor Dave. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to leave my post to inform my brother. He and I will be able to handle he and I will be able should be able to hold off whatever ghouls there are. And I'll go toward old glowy ass. All right, I'm going to attempt to <laughs> not muss up the dirt outside of this. Oh, fuck. It's against us now. Yep. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> so kind of you... wishing you'd read that magazine now, huh? Go ahead and that's, make. That's not the issue. Uh... <laughs> Go ahead and make a wits roll to try and make this soil on the ground as disturbed as little as possible as you go try to inform your brother of the, of the change of the situation. One sec, I want to see if I have anything in my inventory that might boost this somehow. 
can't he just sweep it behind him and then sweep it back into place as he goes well, that That's what I'm looking for, like, if I have, like, a long strand of something, but I don't. All right, wits roll. But seven! I can kind of, I, I can at least get, like, a running start so it looks like my footprints don't start outside of the theater, or from directly inside the theater, at least. Precisely. You do, uh, however, man, uh, you manage to make your footsteps not present around the theater's entrance. However, that's as good as I basically, you're going I, to I basically try to I, I basically try to jump out backwards to make it so it looks like my feet are going to be walking directly in the direction of my brother. Okay. From the uh, from the what you call it bridge. I'd say you're you're out here now. Yeah. I, I hunker down next to him and inform him of the situation. There's something we didn't account for. It's not hunting alone. It's brought somebody that's brought ghouls. Ferals. It'll be a target reach environment. Um your your brother's stealth capabilities drop for just a moment. Um and he holds up a hand. He holds up his pinky. Uh, he, he holds up two uh, fingers, his middle and his index finger. And then he closes his hand, holds up five fingers, closes it again, holds up another five fingers. Oh. So two, five, five. Twelve? That's a lot. Uh, you can Is that including make, the courser? You can make a smarts roll to basically determine more what accurately what he's trying to signal to you. Cool. Hopefully that. Come on, smarts roll. <sighs> Yay. Eleven. You picked up I, on a couple I, I'm of... I'm from of, a, like, military yeah. hand signs. Exactly. Uh, you're, you're familiar with some military hand signs just due to your uncle... Uh, messing around and teaching you some stuff, and also just due to some of the things you may have read in comics, he holds up the two uh, the two fingers for longer uh, than the five and the five. What he's trying to convey to you is two priority targets, ten smaller targets. You were gonna say I nod. What? <laughs> You and I are going to have to take on the smaller ones. And potentially the other organic. It might be able to be reasoned with, but... I'm not counting on that. He nods to you. He, uh... The question is... The, the question is, do we engage here, or do we go... Me find another avenue. Your call. Mm. Knowing that there's only one staircase that they can come up through, I signal for him to kind of like follow me, and I start walking backwards this way towards that staircase. Then when we get to this point, I'm going to attempt to make a leap to this area so that the footprints kind of stop at the stairs but look like they're leading out towards the front of the theater. Okay. And you want your brother to stay where he is? He can stay where he is, but this way I'll be able to kind of like pincer in on the organic targets while the ones that go searching will be going this way where the footprints are leading. Potentially. I don't know how they're going to operate, but I'm doing my damnedest. Okay. Go ahead and roll me. This will be wits as well. Ah, ten. Yes. It goes off exactly the way you imagine it going as you... I'm now hiding behind this corner. 
make these soil footprints uh, as little noticeable as possible. Your brother re-engages his stealth. Are the rest of you doing anything? Or are you staying in the theater? I am going to move and take Apex's position. <clears throat> and I'm going to be... I have one foot on the... Uh, on kind of like a... Uh, uh, a step up on the barrier so I can leap over it and start engaging. Oh, you're already in front of the barrier. Yeah, that's what I meant. We, like, yeah. Uh, so, essentially, if all goes according to plan, the searchers will be around here where the attack will be engaged, and when that attack gets engaged on, Apex would then leap out and start attacking from back to front all of the ghouls that would potentially be a problem. And his Apex's brother would also at the same time be engaging in all the squishy targets that would go down a lot easier than the two difficult ones. Um, that, that is what is currently in his head. Cynthia would probably move to where she can see out the door. Right? Well, just again, mine, the EMP. Ooh, yeah, good. Yeah, I, ma I imagine you two are kind of like side to side there. -ish. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I could probably, you could probably, if she's safe where I am now, I could move into where closer to the door. Yeah, I guess I'll just stay put then and just have rifle ready. There's not a whole lot I can do. I can't really get in there or I'm going to get myself in trouble. Mm hmm. I, I will move here then a little closer so I can see outside the bar see around the barrier a little bit. All right, holding position until uh, until opportunity shows itself. All right. <laughs> As you wait. Suspense is terrible. Nothing you else. you hear the clamor of still more of these uneven footsteps. The noises that you now recognize to be those of feral ghouls climb up the sole available stairwell available to them. Apex just controls his breathing, stretches out any parts that are feeling tense. And do you begin to see them from out of the stairwell, one by one, Oh man, the ghouls are leading? Bastards. <gasps> Ten feral ghouls flood into the upper floor and begin oh. to fan out as if they're searching for something. What the... What the what? Apex holds position. Kind of like leaning against like the side of a wall. If any of them get too close, he will kill it as quietly as possible. Your brother absolutely succeeds his stealth roll. Apex, I'm going to need you to roll stealth as well. As you have a new you position. Come on. Oh no! Apex. That's what do you a mean, six. Oh no. <gasps> oh no! That's a six. A six is a no no. Oh dear. Maybe they won't attack sense. you. Maybe I they're am... not looking for you. 
Maybe they're friends. Maybe uh, they're friendly. Since I fail... Oh, that was fair rule, ghoul, not friendly ghoul. <clears throat> yeah. Easy mistake to make. Uh... So essentially one of them just kind of like rounds the corner and immediately yeah. notices me. The one that steps around the corner um, sort of with a, a bit more intelligence than you're used to for your average feral ghoul begins to look from side to side and it turns its its shoulder over and from your position in this room you're not quite as well hidden as you would like to be and you see as it lets out a uh, before and before it can before it can do that may I attempt to uh gouge out its throat um mm. sure <laughs> uh yeah go ahead and go for a body roll oh. damn it seven so it's dead but it probably still made a noise well it's the, hard to kill things quietly you weren't expecting Not it true. to notice you weren't expecting it to notice you so uh as it like reels up and inhales ready to scream you take your claws and you rake it across its throat and it lets out a <clears throat> and it hits the floor dead however Whoa. the sound of the bunk of the dead ghoul uh. does still uh alert some of the other ghouls that managed to see what just happened oh no oh, can you maybe have a chance to hide again uh, they don't th cue the they doom don't see cue the doom music. <laughs> they don't see you, but they did. They did see that one of the ghouls is in fact dead now. <gasps> they didn't see you, Apex. They didn't see you. You're just so, you're just a ninja in the wind. I'll just go ahead and like Mark of the Ninja. As they begin to fan out a little bit more, these ones don't notice your brother. What is in this room I'm in? Aside from a dead ghoul. Um, let me look. You are in... It looks like sort of a... What was probably a children's play area. You see that there are uh, blocks and stuff that you can um, build sort of prefabricated structures with. Uh, they're they're made of like old foam and and uh, just the, these these colorful bits of fabric stretched over these large foam blocks. Hmm. It appears to be some sort of play area. Um, as the ghouls begin to fan out a little bit further. Onto the top floor. Uh, everyone in the theater hears two more deliberate sets of footsteps. Climbing up the stairs. <gasps> you you hear the voices again. Did they hear something? I don't know. They gotta go up there and check it out. Then move. Voice sound familiar. Give me a smarts roll. I will. That's a ten. A ten? Yeah. The male voice does not sound familiar. The female okay. voice sounds very familiar. 
Because it's the Corsair. Climbing up the steps, is... you see ah. a man in harbinger colors. Oh. Being held by the neck and led by an individual wearing a black coat adorned in a mask that looks like it is made of rotted flesh stapled together. I will go ahead and just for now have that be uh, this individual but a different color. So yeah. The one in yellow is our courser. You do see glowing yellow eyes peeking out from underneath that mask. Apex just hopes that they take the bait, that the trap can be sprung properly. He tries to hold position. It's Another moment passes. She would stop. <laughs> The ghouls start to fan out and explore this area. As the trench-coated individual still leading this ghoul by the neck Make them fan out. All right. And... Let's see what the ghouls do. Do they ignore their friend, or do they... decide to pursue... The noise they heard. Okay. The other ghouls spread out, but a few of them stick around in the area where they heard a noise. Is there anything anyone would like to do? About to freaking move an inch right now. I'm good. I am waiting to either be found or for the trap to go off properly. <laughs> Alvin looks back at <clears throat> Louise and Cynthia and just puts a finger up to his lips. Nods. Remind me, what 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 specific trap did you did you have? The the one in the theater? The um, we're wait we're the... waiting for the courser to oh, walk out right. so Alvin can run out in advance like and ambush him. Or yeah, I'm waiting that for the way. courser and to at, move at, out, at, like, over here, here. Or maybe get closer any, to one any, of the any, MPs. Anywhere where it will be difficult for them to retreat, that way it'll be me and Bruce out here handling the squishies while the gunners take out... I mean, at, the, at this point, it's, it's, it's a little more complicated, but... Mm-hmm. And you, you did you have a pulse mine here as well? No, that, no, was that one is two possible there. areas. Gotcha. I, we, I we put one. We put one in works. place to. Yeah, we put one uh, out to 
basically defend Louise and Cynthia's position from yeah, the Corsair. Yeah, we put them okay. right here. All right. The you bide your time. The ghouls are going to continue to search for you and continue to roll abysmally. As the <laughs> ones over here are just going to continue to fan out. Uh, let's see if this one is cognizant of its own space to not just fall down this huge hole in the middle here. Fall in the hole, fall in the hole, fall in the hole, fall in the hole, fall, fall, It, fall, it, fall, it, it fall, is, fall, it is fall, cognizant fall. of it. No! As it just sort of stops as it sees this huge gap in the bridge. <sighs> Now, does it have a will to live, is the other question. <laughs> it... That is a philosophical question. You like may or may not get first... to. <laughs> Would you like to play the first zombie version of Lemmings? Wait, isn't... Aren't they close enough to the EMP now? It's within 10 feet, right? It wouldn't affect them. That would be bad for us. What? The ghouls? No, the, the, the Corsair. Ghouls. It, it's oh, it's a sh- it's a mine, so it would have to step on it. Yeah, basically. it needs to step oh, on it. Oh, I thought it was okay. Never mind. Never mind. All right. Now, these individuals are going to take some time looking for you all. So they are looking for us. I mean, we knew, but still. it's It could just be incidental. Yeah. See if the ghoul have notice. They could just be looking for anybody. Yeah, they could be looking for some woman named Margaret. You, you guys are actively hiding inside of the theater now, so I will mm-hmm. give you uh, a wits roll to remain hidden, plus one uh. because of the fabulous job Apex did barricading Thank this you. place. Okay, so I'm amazing at tactical plus one. design. Don't which plus one? Yes. No. <laughs> no. That's 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 not that's <laughs> that's a five. But we're in the theater. Yeah, and I'm furthest away. So you know what? You know what, Connor? As this you. <laughs> These two individuals walk further into this upper floor that you two are on. Good enough. That's all we need. (laughs) The trench-coated individual turns its head towards the entrance to the theater. And it's at this moment that something occurs to you that you may have overlooked in the intense preparation to get ready to fight this coarser individual as it locks eyes with you your own glowing blue eyes shining through the dark it pauses and reaches underneath the mask on its face and jerks it up over its head and shaking away its somewhat messy, dirty blonde hair. You see this individual. Artful? What? Oh. Okay. As. Wait. Oh, wait. 
Iris. I know who that is. Iris, oh, the God, woman I... you met in Riverside. She looks liked back my at comics, you. That bitch. Looks back at you with glowing amber eyes. Hello again. And that's where we're going to end the session. Hey! I'm about to kill some ghouls. <clears throat> I'm about to save. Monster. I'm about to save a. I'm about to save a ghoul, man. <laughs> save a ghoul. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm save, gonna a, save ghoul, a ghoul. Kill the rest. <laughs> oh. That See you in a month, Austin. <laughs> See you, yeah. Austin. It'll it'll be uh, a bit of a cliffhanger because we're gonna be waiting a little bit here to. Uh, yeah, sorry. There, there's a lot of schedule conflicts coming up this Indeed. month, apparently. Indeed. But, for now, let's go ahead and let oh, that revelation funny. sit with chat for a little bit. God, that's go ahead, fun. I'll go ahead and put away the abandoned fair stuff. Hmm. I do like the abandoned fair track. I wish I had more opportunities mm -hmm. to use it. Mm -hmm. I can only ever pull it out during my Halloween one shots, and only if I design it around an area that's li that has like, you know, a fair. <laughs> well, with that, uh, tears off the nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm now more glad I'm now I'm now more glad I didn't attack her in Riverside. That would have been awkward. It would have been awkward and probably quite painful for you. It would be quite painful. Quite oh, painful. This sucks. That means that I've that means that I've known her for a while. <laughs> well, she was actually kind of new when we oh, got there. Oh, she was new. Wasn't she? she That's yeah. right. She was like new. A, yeah, right. yeah. You don't have to feel she, bad. You can punch her she, face in. She'd rolled into town shortly before the events of uh, Gateway started. And she was a courser the whole time. <laughs> who'd, who'd have thought? Shit! Huh. Huh. Wait. Yeah. Hmm. She also <laughs> spent a night with Apex's comics, memorizing his tactics. Oh. What? They, <laughs> they don't show off my tactics. They, uh, I mean, they yeah, show they... off my style a Abs. little bit. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. She did it? They show, that I, they show that I have an, they show that I have a ripped eight pack and not this minji six. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this oh, which no. way? This Minji Six. <laughs> Either which way, we'll find out who's getting packed next time on Gateway. Gateway. Hot dang. Let's go around the horn and introduce ourselves, or deintroduce ourselves. Starting with Caitlin, where can they find you? What are you up to? Uh, you can find me all over the internet at Boobs McBalrog. Um. Yeah, we're going to be doing some uh, Roll With Me tomorrow over at twitch.tv slash Lady Pator. Mm, we fought a dragon. Things are happening. <laughs> Lots of things are happening. Uh, I, think that's, <sighs> I think that's it for me. I shilled already, so yeah. Right on. Um, next, we've got Lanny Pator. We're going to find you. What are you up to? Find me all over the internet at Lanny Pator. Uh, tomorrow, more ties that bind. D like Garrick, Garrick's bright scale is risen. Join us Woo! tomorrow. It is <laughs> uh, them thematically appropriate given the day. Uh, interesting <laughs> things happening. Moving towards, moving towards climax. Let's see what happens next time on Ties the Bind. But tune in one o'clock Central Time or your regional equivalent. twitchtv slash Other than that, been playing a bunch of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's good. It's very long. Wish I had more time. Uh, yeah, Jake, Google me. You, you, you'll find other things. <laughs> Google me. Some of them good. That's right me. on. Some of them sinister. Up next, we've got, hey, Mr. Rabbit, where can they find you? What are you up to? 
Hey, what's going on? My name is Rabbit. I'm a writer. Uh, you can find me at Twitch, uh, Twitter, Blue Sky, and all that other funny stuff. Hey, Mr. Rabbit, I got a YouTube channel. Put my bots up there. Mm. Uh, you can go ahead and see me stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, I play games like uh, Path of Exile, Nightingale, uh, The Shore, uh, Trails in the Reverie, Bellatro. I play a lot of uh, pixel retro indie horror and RPGs. So if that's like something you want to get into um, and just hear me tell some dumb, dumb stories, uh, some ideas I have about different writing exercises, or if you just want to learn a couple writing tricks, just uh, come on down to uh, twitch.tv slash hey, Mr. Rabbit. Uh, our big thing right now is for the horror streams on Thursday, Alan Wake. We're going through the entire Remedy franchise. Mm, nice. Always been one of my favorites. I love about, how I love how talking about Giuseppe, is. the uh, the uh, Italian thief. Oh yeah, yeah, like, Grabby Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Hey, Giuseppe. <laughs> I, 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 could, I couldn't. I take your flashlight. <laughs> I couldn't get in, I couldn't get into the first Alan Wake, but then I played Control, loved Control, and played Alan Wake again when it got its remake or remaster, and loved it. Alan Wake is. God, it's it's so weird. I, I just love how weird it is. It reminds me of in the same vein of like Evil Dead or something. It's so schlocky and I, I mean, just it's, love it's, it. I mean, it's, it's, it's just Twin Peaks. It's true. And I do like Twin Peaks. Yeah. So, uh, Daz me? Daz me? Excellent. Lastly, we've got Sarah. Where can they find you? What are you up to? I'm on Twitter and YouTube at Sarah and the HM with Manny Walia. Oh, one more day. One more day tomorrow here at Anime Detour for a few hours before I head off back to the LA lands. And uh, yeah. Ba -da 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 -da. Ah, it's going to take a whole month. <laughs> Plenty That's of time bad. to ponder on strategies. Mm hmm. What strategy is left? We did everything. Now it's like, it's, I wonder if she wants to talk. I'm going to leap out heroically and scream mighty guard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've, you've set up all sorts of things that will help you in this fight, and you may need them. We'll have to see how that goes. But... The next time. The bot stopper. For now. Uh, they can find me what? on Twitter, Twitch... Huh? 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 Eh? Huh? You can find me on Twitter, huh? Twitch, YouTube, Tumblr, Blue Sky, Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, also Thursdays. Uh, yes. Um. Yep. You 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 all know what's up. You all know what I'm doing. Uh. Tomorrow, gonna be streaming some more Dark Siders. Uh, also, check out my DMs Guild. I release 5th edition content on there. Uh, uh, currently working on the Photomancer spellbook. That will be available. Who knows? I don't know. I'm working on it. Is At thing. some point in time. Someday. Eventually. Someday. 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 <laughs> uh, but, yes. Um, that's about it for me. This episode was brought to you in part by Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice! That's right. Oh, boy! It's your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, use the code UNEXPECTABLES, you can save 10% on your order when you shop at Die Hard Dice. Do not forget the merchandise. That's right. You can also check out our spring store. We got all sorts of designs on there that can be basically be anything you want. From apparel to stickers, mugs and water bottles, all sorts of stuff. And Stop there may be more of those well, designs. Nice. Maybe more of the designs uh, sometime in the near future. But for now, we also couldn't do this week in, week out without bits and subs from wonderful people like you. Uh, is huge. from people such as Lord Archive, thank you for the 23 months Dice Ruler, thank you for the 4 bits, I think I finally figured out what Louise would be if the fallout did not happen, she would be a treasure hunter mm. oh, 
like or, Uncharted. You know, or you know, like one of those, like uh, one of those deep sea scavengers. You know, the ones that get, they have like Ooh. TV shows on freaking Discovery. You know, they go and they like do a big deal. Like, look at what we got drug off the bottom of the ocean. Now we're gonna go sell it. Or the low tier version of that, which is those magnet fisher people on uh, TikTok. People Maybe that like Saturdays, just drudge the bottom of bored. rivers. Or, yeah. <laughs> I found a bike. Ah, oh, shit. This or, one might be a bomb. <laughs> or she's totally one of the Storage Wars people. <laughs> oh. That, that, that's the one. That's the one. There it is. Storage Wars shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh. It feels so, Louise. <laughs> Four tours. Um, Gaijin Goomba, thank you for raiding with a party of 71. How's it going, Gaijin? Goomba. Ah, hell no. Thank you for the raid as well. Magic Ninjago, thank you for the 100 bits. Fridays with Spree Squad, also beans. Also a touch of what the hell. Ah oh, yeah, we've we've been we've been collecting up honestly way too many characters in Reverie. <laughs> it's gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I think we have 30. Please stop. This is feeling like Suki then. <laughs> you gotta finally, build your town. Uh... Finally, we got another 100 bits from Magic Ninjago. Some beans. 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 And with that. <laughs> With that, we'll go ahead and sign off for now. Uh, we're not going to have Gateway for a little while here due to some scheduling conflicts. We should, count them should, be back on the 11th of May. The 11th of May. Oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds... Either the 4th or the 11th. I'm not sure which. Are you but, talking about we're moving it to Thursday? It looks State... like uh, the 11th is what I'm seeing. Oh, wait. I was looking at April's month. Yeah, yeah the 11th okay. of Fourth May. 11th of May. <laughs> silly calendar. Rabbit, you silly bitch. All right, there we go. 4th or 11th. Okay, yes. Cool. Uh, but stay I'm tuned. We'll have more on that uh, sometime in the future. But for now, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much for stopping by, everybody. Uh, and let's see who we can raid. Go ahead and sign off. Oh, my voice. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Who should we raid? Bracky's on, playing some Hong Kong Choo Choo. Bracky Hong is in Kong Hong Kong Choo Choo? Well, let's go ahead and Hong raid Star Rail. Bracky. Oh, yeah, do that. Maybe you can find my boy. Maybe. Yeah. What should our raid message be? Feller. You traitorous bitch! Traitor. <laughs> you, you traitorous bitch! Wait, 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 wait! You traitorous synth! You traitorous synth! We are swearing. You synth trollop, you! You traitorous synth! She honk my star till I rail. Oh, she honk my, my star till I rail! Ten. Here, here comes <laughs> another ten pull. <laughs> Take care, everybody. We'll see you later. Have a good night, y'all. Have a good night.